What's up, everybody? It is Jason David Frank here. I actually had a pull on the side of the road to share some notes with you. I put some C's together, and maybe this can help you or maybe not. The first one is to always say, I can. I'm telling you, if you say, I can, I can, I can, something will register in your brain that you can do it, you can do it. Sometimes people say, I can't do that. No, I can't do that. So always say, I can. I know it's simple, but watch yourself. Catch yourself say, oh no, I said I can't. So always say, I can. Number two is confidence. Be confident. Be confident in yourself. Be confident in your product. And that's the other C, which is cockiness. Nobody likes a cocky person. Everybody loves a confident person. But don't catch yourself where you're too confident and all of a sudden you become cocky. So watch that C. Um, next one is compete. What does that mean, compete? My pastor told me a story and said that if everyone was in high school and the teacher said, hey guys, everyone is getting A's. Would you try hard? Would you practice? Would you pass that test? Imagine this, in baseball, in football, every other sport, everyone's a winner. Everyone wins a world champion. Would you watch your sports on TV? No, so compete. But that does not mean compete with your neighbor, compete with your friend. It talks about yourself. Compete within. So don't compare yourself to other people, which is the next one, compare. So if you're competing, then it starts turning into comparing. And then you're like, well, you know, he drives this or she drives that and I don't. And you're comparing yourself to their life. Be you. You know what I mean? So number one, if you're competing, then you're comparing. It takes away focus on you. So focus on yourself and believe in yourself. All right. Um, the next one is to celebrate. Celebrate. Not just celebrate your victories. Celebrate your friends' victories. Celebrate that they got a new job. Celebrate that they got a movie. Just celebrate. Celebrate for yourself, but be happy for other people and celebrate their victories. I see so many times that people are so into themselves, they're competing, they're comparing, and then they're not celebrating for their friends because they're maybe a little jealous, a little envy. So remember to celebrate not just you, but other people. Creative. Be creative. People always ask, how do you come up with content, which is another C, how do you come up with content on your channel? I just be me. I don't care about the likes. I don't care about anything else. What I care about is reaching you guys. Am I making a difference in life? So remember to be creative. Come up with creative things. Be creative in your job. Be creative in your relationship. Circumstances, circumstances. I hear this so much. Yeah, but you don't understand my circumstances. Look, we've all been there. You guys have no clue what I've been through. You have no clue what I'm going through. You have no clue what that person next to you is going through. We all have circumstances. But it's up to you in order to succeed, which goes all the way back to the top. I can, I can, I can. If you say, I can't change my circumstances, then you can't. But if you say, I can, you can change your circumstances. C which is the circle. Who are you surrounded by? Who are your friends? Who are your mentors? These are things that you have to understand you are who you hang out with. So that circle of people, you need to make sure in that circle that those people are going where you're going. Because what happens is the next C, crabs. Crabs try to pull you down. You're in the bucket, right? And when a crab comes out of a bucket, what does the other crab do? The other crab grabs them and tries to pull them down. Are people pulling you down from where you need to be? So remember all these C's come to I can and be confident because I truly believe in what you guys do and I believe you're gonna make a difference. So I want you to guys be yourself. Just be who God's intended for you to be and you will make a difference in the planet. And you will make a difference in your relationships, your friends, and who knows, maybe I'll see you on TV one day. All right, guys, all the best. All right, how's everybody doing?
who do we got up in here? Classy Beats with the $5 donation out the gate. Thank you for your support, my man. If you need a beat, check out Classy. Can y'all hear me okay? I really didn't have much time to prep, and I know I, I hate that I come on here every time with a disclaimer, but my laptop been on the fritz, so if we if I lose y'all, I'll try to get y'all back. How was everyone's weekend? How was, was Did everyone have a good weekend? I know I did. Uh, I told y'all I was going to Disney on ice, and I went to Disney on ice. And my daughter had a phenomenal time. She was locked in the whole time. And I was actually singing the songs because I know them. I know every song in Encanto. I know every song in Frozen. I dare any one of y'all to battle me. I dare you to. I, I, anyway, Disney on Ice was great. Um, it could get a little pricey. It's going to cost you about $500 for some decent t seats and probably $1,000 if you really want to go all out. But... Anyway, anything for my daughter. So who am I? If you may be new, some of y'all may be new, some of y'all may not. I am Henry Resilient, uh, the seeker of truth, a former investigator for a company. I did that for about eight years. After five, I got promoted and I started teaching other people how to conduct these investigations. And it was all business. It was all about money. Either my company was trying to save money extract money or someone was trying to get money from my company so what i would do they'll send me out i'll investigate some people i'll take pictures i'll conduct interviews pretty much write a report make some calculations and next thing you know i'll have a report so that is my little history i'm trying to make this quick because we got a lot to cover we got a lot to cover as you know, I am going through a divorce. And if you've been following my divorce, here's a divorce update for you. Uh, according to my attorney I spoke to today, my soon-to-be ex-wife is willing to be flexible with taking money out of my uh, car, the equity. She's like, she'll give me a break. Whoa. Anyway, but let's get into this. I got a great show for you. Uh, people hate investigators. Because what they do is they dig into your life. They dig into anything you say. They try to sniff it out to see if we can, one, corroborate it. Like, hey, is anyone else saying this happened? And two, they try to disprove anything you say. It's, it's a, it's a two-fold thing in this investigative world. And that's what I do. And well, that's what I did. I don't do that anymore. But I got two stories before we get into JDF of what I want to say because one involves uh, parent parental alienation, right? And I have 50-50 custody. And shout out to the dads who do, but I wasn't offered 50-50 custody. She offered me 60-40. But certain states are starting to default to 50-50 because they understand that mostly the women who get 90% of custody are using the kids to extract resources from dad via child support. I know, I know. And in most states, it could be waived. But, you know, who, who's going to turn down free money? So the first story I have is parental alienation, right? This is when usually one parent badmouths the other to the kids. But what the kids don't know, it's usually the mom because, I'm look, I know I got plenty of females in here and all my female supporters that, uh-oh, uh fix my camera. All right, hopefully we good now. All my female supporters, I'm not trying to bash her. I'm just trying to, you know, spread a little truth and how it relates to JDF's life, okay? And it may not relate to JDF's life. It may just be how I can present this information and how it could come about. So you have, you know, you know, welcome to Good Burger, home with a good burger. How may I help you? You remember, Kel, you know, Mitch, Kel and Mitchell? Well, he has a daughter, right? And his daughter recently came out and started making some allegations, you know, she starts saying, daddy wasn't there. Daddy wasn't there. And I'm like, was he, was he not really there? So let's hear what she has to say. Give me one second. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Right here. So I just quickly want to clear some things up. Let me turn it. Okay. Um, my dad wasn't there for me for 10 years. 10 years. So one. 10 years. You see that? Dad wasn't there for 10 years, right? You see out the gate. Hey, dad's a deadbeat. Dad's a deadbeat. And this is what happened in this culture with these kids these days. You know, like, yes, Kale loves orange soda. He wasn't there for 10 years in my life until I was, you know, like he didn't come back in my life until I was 15. Um, and he was out of my life when I was the age of five. Okay. So my dad wasn't financially or emotionally there for me for 
all of that time, actually. Um, so I think for me personally, that would, if I was a parent who was never in my child's life, I would try to make up for the moments that I wasn't. I would try to be as mothering and nurturing and everything that they need to be because I wasn't able to provide that to them at a young age. I would. But me and my father are completely different people. And maybe you you might. All right. So her and her father's two different people. She's like, hey, you missed my life for 10 years, right? But no one asks why. I tell you, no one asks why. And they say, hey, why wasn't he there for 10 years? We going to get to it. And it's going to be so pivotal in how I bring it back into JDF because it's every like JDF's life is so interesting. Like the more I start digging deeper, the more I start realizing he's a human being just like every one of us. And he has family problems and he has issues. And he was just a normal guy when he took that Green Ranger power suit off. And we go, we going to get to it. But let's finish up her story. It's not going to be long. Be on the same boat as my dad, where you just feel like, well, you can come back after all of that time. And I'm just supposed to naturally love you and naturally be there for you, even though my family, like me, myself, I was homeless. My family's still homeless. Like how these kids these days, man, these kids these days, homeless. And it's her dad's fault. It's her dad's fault. Homeless. My mom still doesn't have a house. What the hell is your mom doing? He's look, I'm, I know I'm getting emotional. I can't get too emotional because I got a stream the rest of this week. We're going to have a stream on Wednesday. We're going to have a stream on Friday, but I just want to get through. Because he sold the house from my mother. Oh God. That we I'm sorry. To the Valley, two to three hours. Let's go. Constantly for him, constantly to keep up that relationship. And my father wasn't able to do that all for me. He's only visited me, I think, three to four times in my four years of going to college. And the one day that he did come out to see me, it was actually that conversation that happened. He drove out to Orange County. All right. So basically what, what you have here, she is throwing her father under the bus. She's saying daddy wasn't there and we homeless and it's all his fault. But what, what the shade room has, they have someone like me. They have an investigator, right? When she come out here, she making these allegations. They dug a little deeper because we don't believe all women over here. We don't believe all men either. You know what I'm saying? We believe the facts. We typically rely heavily on the court case. So what did they do? What did they do? They pulled the court transcripts, right? They pulled the court transcripts and guess, guess what happened? Oh, oh, oh that's, oh. uh-oh. Did I, did I load the wrong, did I load the wrong one? No. There we, there we go. Let me make this bigger for y'all. Let me make this bigger for y'all. They pulled the court transcripts, but before we get to that, right? Let's get to what her father said, because no one cares about what father said. You know why? I'll show you why. I'll, sh I'll show you exactly why no one cares about what father said. This picture right here is about to sum it all up. You see this? She said versus he said, no one cares about, look at, look at everyone there lined up to see what, what his daughter was saying. Now we get to the father, nothing, but let's hear his story. I'm only going to court fighting to see my children, um, fighting for visitation rights. And this, this has literally been going on for uh, seven years now. And uh, it's been a spiritual battle. For, for seven years. And some man might be like, look, I'm throwing in the towel. I can't deal with this anymore or giving up or uh, lost their faith in God. But I remain faithful, you know, and I know God will reunite me with my children. And I have a joy in my heart because of that. And I have that uh, peace because I'm, I'm giving it all to Christ. Um, at the gross all right, so there go him speaking out saying, hey, he's been fighting for his kids. But lo and behold, she's saying he's a deadbeat dad. And this is seven years ago after he was reunited. I am happy to say right now in the name of Jesus, I'm so happy right now to say that I've been seeing my children and my children are back in my life. And I've been seeing them uh, every week 
It's been awesome. It's been beautiful. Um, I'm loving every minute of it. And uh, the kids are just so wonderful. They're just really good kids. And uh, I just been showing them God's love. And um, I'm just thankful because only God could do this. All right. So he's thanking God that he's able to see his kids after fighting for seven years. But what does the court document say? Right. And you see this in families. What typically happens is, you know, women want to take custody of the kid to get all the resources to get the house and then alienate the father. And how does this relate to JDF? Well, one, we got the court documents. And two, who is Jason Meekins? Everyone keep asking me, like, who is Jason Meekins? Who is Jason Meekins? We don't know who Jason Meekins is. Who is Jason Meekins? Jason Meekins is the widower -er of Shayla, who was his, who JDF's wife's biological daughter. And he actually lived with JDF. And he actually experienced a similar, you know, situation per se. We're going to get into, we're going to dig a little deeper because we're not just going to talk about it. We're going to show you the court documents and what was happening with him. So, Basically, let's get back to Kale. Let's finish up this story to, to bring it all home. Um, your mom had zero consequences for any of her conduct, and that's where we're running into trouble because she just does what she wants to do. She's not here today. We've been here several times where she doesn't show up. She comes up with any excuse not to participate in the process. So basically what's, what's happening is he's trying to get to court, and the mother's not showing up. And the court conversation goes pretty quickly, but we're going to get through it. When was the last time that Mr. Mitchell saw his children? Miss Sale. What was the date? You mean outside of reunification therapy? Reunification therapy, we're going to go through it quickly because we got to get to JDF, is basically when a father has been out of his kid's life for a while, the court steps in because the court owns your kids. We'll talk about that later and say, hey, you need to be reunited with your father and you need to pay us to reunite you with your father. That's right. Nothing's free. So the court says any kind of, he is the petitioner. He says six years. Miss South says, no, no, no. Were you at re reunification? Yes, yes, ma'am. I, I was there. That was three weeks ago. Yes, ma'am. That was with Lisa Hacker. It doesn't matter about this, who, who, was, who it was with. So you mean to tell me y'all was in the same room together? Yes, we were in the same room. So without telling me the substance of the therapy, because you have to go through a therapist because, you know, your dad's a stranger and these are your kids, which is sucks because you're a stranger because the mother alienated the father. So now when he sees them, they don't know him. They looking at him like he Michael Myers or something. But so uh, how was it for you? Basically what she says without telling me the substance, he says, yes, it really was to not see them in six years and to finally be able to see them. And my son was so upset that he was hurt. My daughter was also well. They would look straight out the window and not at me. And they said that we don't want to see you. We have a new father. God, hey, God, hey. Sorry, I know y'all hate the sound effects. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, that that hurts, right? Because this this your flesh and blood. And they said we we got a new dad. They seem very rehearsed though. And I told them that I've been trying to see you for years and without talking about their mother, telling them that I love them and my number. This is where you could reach me. Here it is. And I'm here for you. I love you. And you might feel this later. And my son was emotional, end up running. Now, how did this relate to JDF, right? It's a lot of daddy wasn't there stuff going around. Daddy was there. Daddy was brainwashed. Daddy was this. Daddy was that. In the court's eyes, all daddy got to do is pay his goddamn child support. And daddy did that. Daddy paid his child support. Daddy paid spousal support. And he gave up the lion's share of his assets. But we're not here to really talk about that. I, I got to dig a little bit deeper into that. But I do have a couple announcements. As you know, we show respect for all parties involved. So please, no heinous allegations. No calling people out their name. If you don't believe what someone said, just simply say, hey, I don't believe you. If you want to support one party over another, which I don't support because it's divisive, do it respectfully. But what I want to get into, this is about men speaking up. Today is about Jason Meekin speaking up, telling his story, okay? We want to know what happened to Jason Meekins. We want to know what happened to baby Drayden. If you go over to his widow's page, you'll see Drayden plaster pretty much all over it. That's, that's the grandson. And 
we want to get his story. But before we get to a story, because he's supposed to come up live and, t- you know, make peace, we going to get through it. And I just want to say uh, it is some heinous allegations in this. And when we get to that part, it's going to be viewer discretion is advised. And um, it was tough for me to get through because, like I said, when you go through someone's life, you start realizing that they're human just like you. And some of the things that JDF experienced, I experienced in my life as well. So if we have to go to a commercial break and you see me come back with glasses, no, I got too tense. And then I'll, I'll share how, why I got so tense for me uh, when we get to that part. Uh, make sure I got everything. So uh, last time I was online, we got some super chats that came in at the end of the stream. And I don't want those to go forgotten. Like if you want to contribute to the show, you can send a super chat or you can cash app, whatever you want to do. And I just want to reach out to Jonathan Buck, uh, who said, give me one second. On the last stream that we we didn't get to, and this is actually going to pull everything together. What are you trying to prove at the end of the day? Either the, either the, an argument, divorce caused this transition, or they were having a great time and he transitioned anyway. We selfishly wanted, wanted to be the former and not the latter to win. Okay, so that's an excellent question. I'm not really trying to prove anything, okay, per se. You guys are going to have to make up your mind on your own. People said they want the truth. They want to know what happened. So I, my job is to show you everything in his life that was going on at once because as much as we wanted to just be the divorce, what I'm starting to see is it was just more going on in his life than just divorce. And I found some interesting facts through these court documents, which we're about to see, that will make maybe people think twice and maybe, or maybe not, maybe it'll solidify your thoughts, you know, maybe like, no, this, it was that. So that was one donation. And he said another thing, this is bigger than Power Rangers. It's men wanting to change the beast that is divorced. Man, I would love the divorce laws to change, but you know, I'm about to lose 70%, but that's neither here nor there. So Thank you, Jonathan Buck, for those uh, super chats. And we're going to start off and make you the sponsor of today's stream. So, all right. So what do I have for you today? After we got through that, we are going to, oh, hold on, got an advertisement. These websites be advertising the crap out of things. All right. So the, most of today's stream centers around this article, which I'm about to share with you guys. Power Rangers star JDF was dragged to court by father of his stepdaughter's child weeks before, you know, his demise. And at first, when I when I start searching for these public records, I saw the widow was suing him for custody. But lo and behold, when you dig a little deeper, I saw that he uh, filed a writ of habeas corpus to, hey, give me my son back. So we're going to go through the timeline. We're going to go through that beginning to end. So what do we have here? We have the original petition. Now, look, we want to build the timeline, right? Because JDF is involved in this. And I want you guys to write down the dates. Uh, We know JDF uh, filed for divorce, what, in August. Uh, He was served at Comic-Con in September. Had a couple... uh, what was it? Hearings? Well, not hearings, where he provided discovery in October, like the 5th, and then he provided discovery on the 19th. And then we have more stuff coming. And what do what also do we have? We also have the final, the end of everything. It, well, it's not the end. It's, I, I guess it's still an open case, but I'm going to share what I know about custody because guess what? I used to be a ward of the state, right? My mother lost custody of me when... I was young and I can I can talk about that. And some of that stuff is actually going to relate here. So let's get back to the beginning. Where are we at? All right, let me go through some stuff real quick just to do a little bit of house cleaning. All right, so what do we have here? This is a original petition for writ of habeas corpus. Basically, habeas corpus is, hey, produce this. And can we get no all caps? Please, no all caps. A hey, mods, if you see someone one with all caps in the chat, time them out, please. So, who is this? Uh, this is in the interest of Drayden Matthew Meekins, who is a child. Then, um, before I get into this, right? 
I got to make an announcement because what's what's been happening is people keep emailing me and I respond to all the emails and hitting me up on Instagram and some people find me on TikTok. That's all great. But these are all public records. Anyone could get. And no, I am not going to send you the public records in which I paid for. I'm not. And what's redacted? What do I always redact? We don't do doxing. So even though it's public record, out of respect for the parties involved, I don't show their address. I don't show their case number. Anything that's not out in the public, I typically don't share. But all of this is public record. You know, this is very sensitive stuff. And most people do not care. Hold on. Let me let me let me block someone. Let me hide someone from the channel. All right, they go. We don't tolerate disrespect. If you want to disrespect someone, go go to your own platform. So original petition for a writ of habeas corpus. Let me get this back on the screen for y'all. And what is this? This is habeas corpus brought to you by Jason Meekins, petitioner who resides at It Doesn't Matter. And notice how the last three of Jason Meekins' driver's license are X'd out, right? Because it doesn't matter. Lawyers can just block that out. No one cares. Some other lawyers put it in there, but I, I typically redact it anyway. Respondent, we have Tammy Frank is the maternal grandmother of the child. Jason Frank is the maternal grandfather. And this was filed October 10th. Okay, October 10th. We know D-Day is November 19th. This is October 10th. All right, so this is involved in JDF. And often what, ta- what happens, right? I'll, I'll give you my spiel a little bit later, is things become a pressure cooker. Your life becomes a pressure cooker, becomes pressure, right? So if you're under a lot of pressure now, and what I'm learning as I look into his life, hold on, I, I, I know I keep doing this. As I look into his life, I realized he was the goose that laid the golden egg. A lot of people relied on him, a lot of people. And that, I hope to get to the bottom of that eventually, but a lot of people relied on him. And when you do that, it's a great sense of pressure, you know, pressure on a man to provide. And that's what we naturally do. But when everyone looks at you as a provider, who looking at you like a human being? Even us, guilty. Hey, we're in his line. What do we want? We want a picture. We want a signature. We want an experience. But does anyone really say, hey, what does he want? So in this first part, we're actually going to dispel a conspiracy theory for all my conspiracy theorists out there. Uh, where y'all at? Uh, let me get to it right quick. Sorry about that. So there was a rumor that he he uh, transitioned on the anniversary of Shayla. Well, now we know that uh, petitioner present is entitled to possession of his child, Drayden Matthew Meekins. He is the biological father and has been standing to bring the suit. Petitioner was married to the biological mother, Shayla, and she transitioned on October 21st, 2021. So there you go. There, there's a, there's a, a huge fact right there that he did not transition on Shayla's anniversary, okay? So there you go. For my conspiracy theorists, this is from the father who's saying his wife died on this day. All right. Respondents have refused the child to petitioner after numerous requests. So basically, hey, give me back my kid. And they like, no. Which, you know, uh, she transitioned on October 21st, 2021. And we filed almost a year later. That, you know, that causes some concern for me. But I know how this process works. What happens is you ask, you ask, you ask, and you get fed up. The child is legally restrained by respondents, Tammy Frank and... Jason Frank, respondents have denied petitioner access to communication with his kid. All right. So there, there you have it. Hey, I can't get my kid. Process should be served. That's their personal address, which is blocked out. Um, writ of attachment. Uh, any of the person rated Matthew Meekins, respondents have refused to turn the child. It's basically uh, repeating the same thing. And he has been unsuccessful. And communicating with respondents. So basically it says, not only are they holding my kid, but I can't even get in contact with them. He is requesting, this is, this is so standard what I'm seeing in every freaking court document in Texas. Pay my attorney fees. That's basically it. And a prayer because we know that the judge is God in these family courts. So 
petition prayers that the court immediately issue uh, a writ of habeas corpus commanding that the child be brought immediately before this court and that the child be reunite returned to the petitioner. Petitioner further requests that respondents be ordered to pay all costs. Petitioner pay all relief. Basically, hey, I want you to pay for me to get my kid back. And this is his signature. This is Jason Meekins. He signed it on October 4th, but it doesn't get filed to the Tim. So are, are we all following this, right? Now, what happens after you file a lawsuit? You have to serve someone, but we don't get that far, right? Because we, we got the dates. We know the dates. October or September 8th or whatever is divorce was filed. And on the 23rd, he was served. All right. So what is this? This is basically a transfer order saying, hey, we're not going to hear this case in this court in this is October 11th. We're going to hear it in the other court because this divorce is taking place between Jason and Tammy Frank. Are we all following? Someone saying blurry? All right. Our, the document may be blurry a little bit. I can make it bigger, but it, it is what it is when it comes to these documents. So let me do a quick little recap. Uh, we have Jason Meekins. He is the widower of Shayla, and he is requesting his kid. And, JD, and JDF and presumably Tammy have them, but they are going through a divorce. So what happens next, right? Let me get a sip of water. Yeah. Jesus. Uh-oh, soundboard going crazy. So what do we have here? Uh, let me share it. Let me zoom in so it's not blurry. Let me make it bigger. All right, hold on, hold on. Where are we at? All right, there we go. So this is a writ of habeas corpus, and they're basically saying, Sheriff, I need you to serve these people. You are hereby commanded to serve Green Ranger, this writ of habeas corpus. Uh, this was declared on the 10th day of October. And what happened, right? What happened? to the sheriff all right let's see they're saying hey on the 10th day of november you need to report to court at 9 a.m with the, the freaking kid all right or a reason as to why you're not and he was served remember the timeline the timeline is so important he was served on October 26th. So JDF got a lot of legal issues going, right? Um, I don't know if this is the real Sky, but we about to hide her. Uh, this has nothing to do with her. So see ya. Um, Frank was served on 1026 at 1229. All right. And they took three attempts, right? So you look at that. Three attempts. JDF is elusive, man. Like you, when it comes to serving him, he can be he could be Neo in the Matrix. So three attempts, but they finally served him 1026 at 1029. Where did they serve him at? His home address. Now, this may align with they were potentially reconciling right then and there. Okay. He was served on his home address, 1026. What happened next, right? Like I said, I present you guys the facts and you make the decision of what's what and what's true and what's not. All right. So where do we have here now? This is 11-3. JDF is still around. Original petition and suit affecting the parent-child relationship. This is in the Matthew interest of Jaden or Drayden Matthew Meekins. So now what we have is Tammy is suing for custody, okay? This is where we at. This suit is brought to by Tammy Frank. The last three of her social is this. It really doesn't matter. We just want to get to the meat and potatoes. No court has jurisdiction over this, of this suit or of the child subject in the suit. Basically, there's no court order over the child. Even though it's his father, no court, because what happens is sometimes if you have a kid out of wedlock, you have no parental rights. 
So keep that in mind to all my men who want to procreate out of marriage. You will have no rights to your kid. So if you have a kid with a woman and she want to pack up and move to Wisconsin and you in Texas, ain't nothing you can do. It's going to be an uphill battle to establish rights. I strongly encourage men not to have kids out of wedlock, but you know how I feel about marriage. So what do you, what do, you do? We'll talk about that at the end. All right. Uh, the mother of the child, uh, Rhea, uh, person entitled to citation. This is about Drayden. Um, the mother of the child is subject in the suit is Shayla. She passed away on October 21st. Now look at this typo. Y'all see the typo? This happens all the time in court documents. I kid you not. Some typos mean nothing. And then some typos mean so much that you have to pretty much recreate the whole document. This is not a huge deal of a typo. A copy of her death certificate is attached here to as exhibit one, the father of the child of this suit, Jason Meekins, Jason Matthew. He is the paternal father uh, evidenced by an unrescinded and uncontested acknowledgement of paternity of the child filled with the vital statistics. Units. Vital statistics is basically, Hey, yes, we are on record. We know he is the father. All right. Y'all following me? Y'all getting this? All right. I don't, see no, I don't see too many complaints in the chat. So I'll keep going. Um, where are we at? That's his address. Now, this is where it... Remember when, when, the, when he first filed for divorce, I said, uh, usually there are certain things you see in divorce and there are certain things you see in custody. And when you see certain things in divorce, you're like, where are the kids? We're going to get to that. There are no court-ordered conservatorships, court-ordered guardianships, or other court-ordered relationships affecting the child subject in the suit. Hey, no one has jurisdiction over this child. Okay? Property, the child owns no property. There's no protective order for the child. Conservatorship, here's the meat and potatoes. The parents of the child are or will be separated. We know one is not here anymore so that that's a little confusing to me but the appointment of the parents as joint managing conservators would not be in the best interest of the child so again we know one parent is no longer here but they say in joint custody is not in the best interest of the child it is the best interest that the petitioner which is the grandmother be appointed sole managing conservator of the child. I want sole custody. Proceeding this following the suit, respondent has engaged in a history or pattern of child neglect. Now, to be fair, I saw no cases but that with, with Jason Meekins. And people, this is typical of a any custody battle. Like you remove, you remove the grandmother for, for who she is. You remove Jason Meekins. You put in one, another mother and another father who may not see eye to eye in this mirror is exactly it's like a template you can you can kind of see it it's it's textbook lawyers just have these drafted up and all they do is just change the names petitioner requests that the court consider this conduct in appointing a petitioner as sole managing conservator or the joint parties managing some conservators so it's either i get sole custody or i get joint custody either way i want some custody now, this look, when you want custody, I hate this part about custody. No one just no one comes out and says, hey, I just want to be in my, my grandkids life or I just want to be in my son's life or I just want to be in my daughter's life. You have to basically throw them under the bus. So this is how this is how relationships get strained, because you're, you're throwing me under the bus. You're throwing me under the bus and now you're about to act like you're my best friend if you lose. So. That's when people come off as disingenuous and you're like, yo, you just said I'm doing, you know, illegal drugs. I'm accused of neglect. And, you know, after this case, if you if you win, you throw it in my face. But if you lose, you're going to walk all that back and be nice and just say, well, I just wanted the best. I hate this stuff. I kid you not. I see it way too much and men talk about it, but no one no one cares. This. No one cares. All right. So let's get back into it. Respondent has signed an affidavit of relinquishment on or about March 30th to the petitioner. So this is major. Not only is she saying, hey, he does drugs, drugs in front of the kid. He also signed over his parental rights on March 30th. Okay. 
Petitioner requests that the court deny respondent any access to the child. Hey, I know that's your son, but I don't want you around him. Okay. And we're going to talk about this because like I said, my mother lost custody. And when, when I get to my custody story, you'd be like, holy crap. But alternatively, per petitioner requests that the court render a possession order that provides the respondent's periods of visitation to be continuously supervised by an entity person chosen by the court. So now we have now we have it right. She's like, hey, like, look at this, right? This is the grandmother of your kid. And this is. A, a, a serious court document, a serious one where the way custody works. Is. It could get contentious and y'all like, where does JDF come into place? I'm going to show you because. This kind of triggers some things. We already know he was dragged into court before his demise, but how was it? We, this is this is the boil the boiling. Like think of it as a pressure cooker. We got the divorce in the pressure cooker. Now we have uh, some other stuff. We going we gonna go back to when the pressure start building. But let's get through this support. Here we go. Petitioner requests that respondent be ordered to provide for the child, including the payment of child support. <laughs> and medical and dental support in the manner specified by the court. Petitioner requests that the payments for the support of the child survive the death. Okay, look at this. This is, this is next level stuff. I'll, I'll explain it to you. Um, survive the death of the respondent and become the obligations of the respondent's estate. So even if, even if Jason Meekins transitions, I still want child support. And I got to do this. I have to basically what you have to do is you have to get a child insurance. I mean, not a child, a life insurance policy for the amount of the estate. And you usually make the child the beneficiary. So that we have that. Uh Oh, here we go. Request for temporary orders. Remember the TRO, you typically see this with kids. So here we go. We got a TRO. We got the kids. Petitioner rest requests the court after notice and hearing to make temporary orders for the safety and welfare of the child, including but not limited to the following. Appoint the petitioner sole managing custody conservator. That's just like Britney Spears' father. Like, hey, I'm, I'm her, I'm the kid's father, or, or I oversee everything the kid does. Ordering the respondent to provide support for the kid. Look, child support, man, I really wish they would abolish it. It's really fraud. But this is what they do. They weaponize the child support. Now, we're going to talk about the weaponization of child support, um, including the payment of child support and medical and dental support in the manner specified by the court while in cases pending. So, hey, pay for the kid, pay me child support, pay for medical, pay for everything and not see your kid. Like, like, is this fair? Is this fair to the father? Put a one in the chat if you think this is fair to the father, given the, the allegations. Just put a one. All right. So anyway, let's keep going. Denying the respondent access to the child or alternatively rendering a possession order, providing the respondent's periods of investigation be basically supervised visits. So these are the stipulations of the TRO. Okay, so we got some twos in the chat. So some people think this ain't fair. And I'm with you. You mean to tell me you want me to pay child support, pay for everything, and then not see my kid? And then you accusing me of being a drag addict? Like, come on, wh like, wh what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? So uh, ordering the preparation of child custody evaluation. So now we want a child custody evaluation regarding the circumstances and condition of the child, the parties, and the residents of any person requesting conservatorship so basically when you see this in a child custody hearing is hey i need someone to say that this kid is safe now mind you this is his son this is a biological son who's been taken from him or you know they're doing it in the best interest of the child but if it was vice versa it'd be called kidnapping all right where are we at um you can't disturb disturb the peace of the child Hiding or secreting the child from the grandmother, making disparaging remarks of the child um, or petitioner's family in the presence of within hearing of the child. So don't talk bad about me. It's pretty standard. Consuming alcohol within 12 hours. Like this is 
I want some attorney fees and a prayer. Like, so now you want me to pay child support, not see my kid and pay your attorney fee. So now you want me to finance you taking my child from me. This happens to men all the time. And do you think JDF experienced this? Do you think JDF had to pay lawyer fees for his three kids to be taken away? Do you think he had to pay child support? Do you think he had to pay spousal support? Like, imagine that. Imagine having to pay to get your kids taken away. That weighs heavy on a man. All right, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. And everyone's like, where, where does this fall in line with JDF? Y'all think it's almost some court system rant or whatever. All right, here is it up. Here is coming up. This is viewer discretion is advised for this next part because it's the affidavit. But before we get into it, let me just check the pause and see how, how how's everyone doing. All right. This affidavit was submitted on 11-3, the same day when she sued him. And Filed the TRO. And now we're about to get into some JDF stuff, some heavy stuff. So let's see what we got. Some people said it's not fair. All right, not fair at all. Who is this? Eric, not fair. All right, viewer discretion is advised. Um, these are the words of the grandmother and the widow. And she's about to give why he shouldn't have custody a detailed a detailed response of why he shouldn't have custody so let's get into it hey we're doing good on time and minkins is supposed to come up to share his side of the story um let me see let me make sure all right so this is 1113. Remember, JDF is around. They should be reconciled by now, right? Remember, the People Magazine episode, People Magazine interview said six weeks before he transitioned, they were reconciling. So, or reconciled, reconciled. The semantics, I, I get a little blurry. So, she prevailed, you know, Tammy is saying she's of sound mate and she's under oath, okay? Now, look. Under oath really don't mean nothing in family court. So when I see under oath, I just kind of take it with a grain of salt because these affidavits, you know, they were used against me to say some things that were not true. And that's just what it is. So my name is Tammy Frank. I am above the age of 18. So she older than 18 to make this affidavit. The facts stated in this affidavit are within my personal knowledge and are true and correct. Before I keep going, let me do, uh, can I get, can we like the stream? <laughs> like we got 200 people in here and 72 likes. Can I get 10 more likes? All right. Where are we at? Let me make this bigger because I want you guys to see it. I want you guys to see it and feel the words with me as I read it. And this is about to be deep. Uh, viewer discretion is advised. We're just reading here. All right. I am the petitioner in this case. The maternal grandmother respondent is Jason Matthew Meekins and the adjudicated father of Drayden Matthew Meekins, who was born. I don't know why I blurred out his birthday. He was born May 21, May 2021. My daughter, Shayla, is Drayden's mother. She passed away on October 21st, 2021. So think about this, October 21st, 2021, that anniversary was about the time all these court filings were going back and forth, you know, between JDF and the divorce. Now we got JDF in this custody. He's wrapped up in it. And you, you have to wonder, does JDF support it? Does he not? We're going to get to it a little later because I know how these uh, affidavits work. Okay. So uh, this dude keeps spamming the chat. Let me time him out for a minute. Oh, sorry, wrong person. Uh, put user in timeout. What the heck? And 
Uh, you could release Eric Seguin. Um, is Brent is Brent Fam? Can someone tr can someone time him out? There you go. He out of here. All right, he just keeps remembering the same thing. So, all right, hold on. We got a contributor to the show. All right, where are we at? Shout out to Just Niece for the $5 donation. No comment, no nothing. Just, hey, I appreciate you, Just Niece. Thank you. All right, Shayla met Jason at Taylor Recovery Addiction Treatment in Houston, Texas in 2018. Shayla was there for roughly four months and was under, it was under my impression that Jason was a long-term resident, I believe for three years. Shayla moved out of state. She returned in late, early, uh, late spring, early 2020. They started hanging and laughing, and she was pregnant three months later. Shayla worked up until she was seven months pregnant when the doctor told her she needed to stop for health reasons. Her and Jason would fight a lot because he would not work or even look for work. He had no car, no driver's license. He got physical with Shayla when she was pregnant, which we don't support that. We hope that's not true. But, you know, if he comes on, we're going to ask him. He had no car or driver's license. He got physical with Shayla when she was pregnant. She had very low self-esteem. Uh, she said he wouldn't do that again. She didn't know who he was, uh, who she was getting involved with, much less having a child with. See, this is, this is background. This is fluff, right? What does this have to do with him being the father? Now, I'm not saying I support him uh, getting physical with his pregnant, uh, we know what she told me was wife. But at the same time, these TROs, they, they say things like this to kind of lay the foundation, okay? They lay in the foundation that, hey, he was physical with her. What does that have to do with him being a father? And women going to hate me for saying that. Some, some men, and I hope this is not y'all, they make mistakes. And I'm not excusing his mistakes, but I'm, at the same time, I'm saying, like, what does this have to do with him being a father? Just saying. All right, shout out to Drizzy from MTP, Prayers and Positive Energy. Rest in power, JDF. Yes, let's rest in power, JDF. And you're going to see how this ties into JDF. Thank you, Drizzle from MTP for the donation. I appreciate you, man. All right, where are we at? When Drayden was born, I helped her out all the time. When Drayden was two months old on July 4th weekend, they came to, I just redacted the place. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to dox anyone, okay? We don't dox. Um, to my father's stepmom's beach house for the weekend. My family was there celebrating. Jason Meekins, not JDF, drank all weekend. He and Shayla got into an argument, and he hit Shayla over, over and over on her legs. She started crying. My husband was on the balcony, and he saw the situation. Husband was on the balcony. He saw the situation. My entire family heard him tell Shayla he was going to, um, I believe that word is grape the grandmother and make her watch, then delete Drayden, then he would delete her. This, that his family were gangsters and that he would delete her whole family. Let me repeat that. He was hitting her legs according to the grandmother. And he told her, Shayla, that he was going to grape the grandmother, make Shayla watch, delete Drayden, then delete her. His families are gangsters, and they will lay down the whole family. Okay? I don't know, know what promoted that. I don't even know what prompted that. But what I do know is for this to be such a serious allegation, and I have to be objective... We have no affidavits from JDF to corroborate this, not from the father, not from the stepmother. Okay, so just to be fair, I tried so hard to get her to think hard about their relationship. At this point, she already knew he was nothing. 
he said he was, all right? That he was a pathological liar. He lied about his whole life from getting a degree in teaching about his three years in Atlanta where he was homeless with his boyfriend. The list goes on. What does this have to do with him being a father? That's the biggest question. Okay, he could be homeless. Okay, he could have a boyfriend. Okay, maybe he made those threats. I hope he didn't make those threats. He told me, I, I'll, let him, I'll let him share his story. But those allegations are serious. You do not want someone who did any of this around the kid. But like I said, this, none of this still has anything to do with him being a father. All right. But he's threatened deletion. He's threatened to delete the kid. So if he threatens to delete the kid, then he shouldn't be around the kid. Okay. But where is everyone else's affidavit? That's all I'm saying. All right. Um, where are we at? Da, da, da. Shayla asked me if Drayden could come live with us because she wanted to leave Jason. But after having a conversation with his parents, Jason Meekin's parents, she decided to give him one more chance. Look, women, to all my women here, right? To all my women, let me give y'all a message. If a guy hits you once, leave. If he threatens to hit you, leave. Okay, because just at the mere threat, that means he's already accepted in his mind that he will do it. And it's just not if he will, it's when will he. So that's my advice to all women. I got a sister, my mama black. So I'm telling anytime, just once, even if he bump, even if he shove you, get out. Why, why risk it? Why risk it? That's all I'm saying. Why risk it? Don't say for love. No, please don't say for love. All right. Um, I should have done more. She might be alive, but I couldn't push my opinion on her. It was her life. Finally, after not having a full-time job, he got a job on a cruise ship. He was going to be going six months at a time with some vacation. Her and Drayden was over my house for that. Now look at this, right? He has no job, but you want him to pay child support. This is how the child support trap works. The child support is a trap. You put someone who has no job on child support, you're setting them up for failure. You're hoping that they default on child support, so they go to jail, and then it's easier to get custody. Easier. It's, it's super easy to get custody if you say, oh, dad's in jail. Oh, why? He didn't pay child support. No one cares. No one cares. There's no like, oh, he's battling with addiction, perhaps. All right, let me keep going. Her and Drayden were over my house for that month. She and I talked a lot during that month. She told me she never trusted him alone with the baby. Now, this, this is a huge allegation again. Unsubstantiated. It's hearsay. Hey, don't leave my kid with don't leave my kid alone with him, right? I'm still not seeing really like only thing I saw that that should say he shouldn't be around the kid is he threatened to delete the kid. Everything else is murky but if he threatened to be to delete the kid then sure he shouldn't be around the kid all right we're about to get to the viewer discretion advice part um because i'm gonna hide it all right she and i talked a lot during that month she told me she never trusted him alone with the baby she felt like he would abuse him because he was abused by his adopted mother's guy best friend and his grandfather so this is where you know i tell men hey stop telling uh you know, people, all your business, because what's happening? Maybe he told Shayla, Shayla told her mom. And where is it at now? It's in this freaking document trying to take custody from his kid used against him. But at the same time, just because a person was abused as a child does not mean they shouldn't be in a kid's life. OK, I know I hate to say it, but I know people who were abused and they are parents and they would never abuse their kid. So this is where it, it loses me a little bit. Um, I was a drowned Drayden first five months of his life and not once did she leave him alone with Jason and his family knows this to be true. Is that unsubstantiated? This all hearsay. Uh, she felt the disconnect between Jason and the baby. Hearsay. This was a great concern of her. Shayla told me that if she left him alone, he would delete her and the baby. 
He was hot tempered and explosive, especially when he drank and we become a different person. Evil. He's a severe alcoholic. Here we go. Now, this is the moment. And, oh man. All right. Let me take a little break real quick. This, where, this, in my opinion, is where the pressure started. This is where the pressure started cooking for JDF. On October 20th, 2021, Jason Meekins was on FaceTime with uh, her daughter. He knew she was really messed up. Later, we were told by him that she looked like she was on a bunch of Xanax bars. They argued she got up to make Drayden a bottle. He heard a fall slash thump. He said he waited a while and kept yelling. And her kept yelling at her. And she never came back to the phone. Then he states either he hung up or got disconnected. Like, let's read, let's go back through that. She's, he said she's messed up. They argue. She got up to make Drayden a bottle. He heard a fall of thump. He waited a while, kept yelling at her. She never came back up to the phone. He states he either hung up or got disconnected. To me, this says he was not living there. He tried to call her back over and over. He states he was scared to call 911 because what if she just passed out from the drugs? He was scared Drayden would go to CPS. This is true. If I know this from experience, uh, we'll get to that. He called over and over until 1 a.m. 1 a.m. He called over and over. Could not get in touch. I know this be, to be true because I have her phone, which she still has. Then he goes to sleep until 8.30 ish. Calls her again. No answer. He texts me. So this is October 21st. He texts me. I asked him to call 911 or the ambulance. Now, this got to be objective. He said, I couldn't hear from her. You know, you can call 911 or the ambulance for someone out of state. It, you don't have to physically be there. She could have called 911. He said he would. All right. I told my husband, Jason David Frank, he went over there right away. The drive is about 40 minutes. He got there and found my daughter expired and Drayden in his bouncy seat. So think about this. We know JDF loved her as his own. And let's, let's get through this and we're going we to we break this down. As I type, this is devastating and still unbelievable. So hard and heartbreaking. My husband got Drayden, brought him home after they checked him out. All right, what do I want to talk about here? Mm, here we go. So this is where the pressure started cooking. JDF finds her, finds the kid, brings her back. Where is Jason Meekins at? Where is he? I don't know. I don't know. And what happened? JDF... I believe he came into her life when maybe she was around six. If my sources are correct, maybe a little older. And you know, he was estranged from his other daughter. So what happens when you have a kid and you have that love to give that kid and that kid ain't around, you may put that energy, that, that love you have for maybe your bio kid that you're estranged with into Shayla. So when he found her, that will break you. That will break you. And I know this because I, w I witnessed in my family, it break my family. Because I had a cousin who was my top five. And she, parents think it was an accident. But she texts people. She texts people before. And she didn't text me. So... I still feel a little guilty about that. All right, we got to take a commercial break. I'll let y'all marinate on that. Uh, give me a second. 
Uh, uh, just give me, give me, give me a second, guys. Rich, it is Jason, David, Frank. I'm just making an announcement for people out there. The Green Ranger, White Ranger, Red Zeo, Red Turbo, Black Dino Thunder. Do 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 do. Well, Black Dino Thunder don't do that. Now my new movie called The Legend of the White Dragon. This is the good guy. This is the bad guy. I just made custom helmets. Listen, first of all, Valerie wanted me to tell you Happy Father's Day and uh, that you are an awesome father. And I'm so glad, Valerie, that um, I got a chance to come back here and make. All right. So. And all right. And what what happens when you lose a kid? Um, her mother found her, actually, because they were in the next room. This, this is my cousin. They're in the next room. They hear a pop. They hear a scream. They go in try to, you know, stop the bleeding, but the damage is done. So what, what happened, right? That love that JDF had for Shayla, maybe, you know, Tammy had for Shayla, where does it go? It gets transferred. Now, now, now Drayden becomes the center of that love. And this is October 21st, 2021. And let me, I have to email someone and see if he is ready to pop on give me one second um nope not yet all right so where are we at now this is where it gets interesting right this is where it gets this is where it gets interesting in my opinion Jason Meekins came to our house to stay for the week of the funeral. Okay. I asked if Drayden could stay with me after losing my daughter. He was the only thing I had left to her. So far, all this is sad. And I have to be objective. What does this have to do with him not having custody? I only saw him the threat being the one reason he shouldn't have custody. All right. Jason Meekins and his family agreed. And his family returned to Dallas. Jason's adopted mother and stepfather kept in contact. They came down and saw Drayden and Jason twice, October and December. We invited them into our home. They told me and my husband a lot about Jason. There's more hearsay. They did not trust him alone either with the baby. Uh, they wanted us to share custody of Drayden. So now the grandparents are conspiring to have custody of a kid that's not theirs. I'm telling you, man, people fight over kids. You, you know this? That Fo. sound bite? It's always Jermaine Fo. She did not want to lose custody of her kids. And maybe I'll touch on that at the end. They told us that Jason was not mentally fit or financially fit to care for the baby. They shared stories about Jason, this is all Jason Meekins, that he has always lied ever since he was a young boy. Got into a lot of trouble in school, lied about getting touched. He didn't connect with friends nor his adopted siblings. They took him to a lot of doctors and counseling. They told me and my husband he could never raise Drayden or even be alone with them. They had their own concerns. So now you got the grandparents, according to uh, Shayla's mom, saying, hey, even his parents agree with me that he should not have custody of the kids. And this happens. Remember, this is all to take custody. This is a statement to extract custody from Jason Meekins. Things became a little hostile with Jason's family when they demanded that we allow Jason's cousins who are gang members from L.A. to live with Jason in Shayla's rent house that we are paying for. So now the family, I don't know what the family is. Is it the grandparents? It just says the family. We refused and they tried to blackmail us. All along, they were telling Jason racial things about us like we are trying to whitewash trading, etc. Um, let me, for context, whoa, whoa, whoa. For context, let me show you who Jason Meekins, Jason Meekins is. 
and we're going to share this tab. This is Jason Meekins. You see Shayla right here, and you see Jason Meekins. That's Jason and Shayla right here, okay? All right, back to the document. So I just want you all to have a face. All right, where are we at? They were telling them racial things while Jason was at his house for... While Jason was at my house for a couple of weeks, you know why this is highlighted? Because he threatened to grape you. He threatened to, to delete the whole family. Maybe he had a change of heart and you invited him over for a couple of weeks. Now, this is observations that took place while at um, the house. He did not help with Drayden at all. He slept all day. One time I put Drayden in his porta crib in the family room next to the kitchen Drayden woke up from his nap and started crying. Jason just slept. He never woke up. I had to shake him, yell at him his name, and never woke up. Shayla and his mother always said he sleeps through everything. More hearsay, right? Alarm clocks uh, for work. Nothing can wake him up. Super scary with a baby. I agree with that, though. If you, if you can't wake up, it is super scary if you have a baby. He laid up at my house doing nothing. Remember, this is the guy who threatened to delete the whole family. Jason finally went to stay with a guy he knew, and I had witnessed him taken on FaceTime a few weeks after my daughter's passing. I asked Jason several times to go down to Wick, trading was on, on it, and to get formula to help out. Since he would not work or help financially, but he never would. So basically, hey, go get some Wick for, our, for the kid. My husband and I did everything. So this is going back to JDF. JDF is involved in his grandson's life. Doctor's appointments, uh, well baby checks, food, diapers, clothes for a growing baby, formula, everything. Jason came to me in February 2022 asking me if I would adopt Drayden because he knew Shayla would want him to be with me. And he knew he couldn't take care of Drayden in any way. I have texts that he wanted this. I would love to see those texts, by the way. At this point, I had, to, I had an actual care, control, and possession of Drayden since my daughter's funeral. So basically, Drayden has been with the mother from October to February, right? We built in a timeline. I agreed to adop, adopt Drayden. What about JDF? Did JDF agree to adopt Drayden? You see? Because if we go back to the People Magazine article, this is when things started to separate. Um, where we go? Uh, a year ago, my daughter Shayla, whom Jason helped raise as his own, suddenly passed away. Jason had been the one to find her when it happened. See, I love that. Not that she passed away, but the fact that we see it in the article and now we see it in the affidavit. Now we got two sources saying the same thing. It's not, it's not switched up where it's like, oh, Jason found her, then I found her. Then it, it, it conflicts things, okay? When it happened, the situation wrecked our family emotionally. She shares between losing her and helping raise her baby son, Jason and I started having marital issues. For anyone who has known the pain, look, man, losing a child, no mother, I don't care how y'all feel about her, no mother should have to bury their kid. And I hope um, I don't have to bury my daughter. Sorry. Um, Tammy says she and Jason decided to separate at that time, not knowing what else to do. So the court documents say they separated July 1st. She said they separated at, after Shayla passed. We going to get we going to get back to it, y'all. But y'all y'all seeing this, y'all seeing how this works. How you have to cooperate things, y'all seeing how you, you have to, you know, no stone gets unturned, you know, goes without being overturned or whatever, whatever the saying is. So he asked to adopt in February, which she did say um, she would. I love him with everything and want to provide the best life for him. I retained a lawyer and started the adoption process, which is currently pending in the 308th court district under this case number. Jason Meekins signed a voluntary affidavit relinquishing his rights. And y'all like, Henry, where, where's that signature? <laughs> uh, if I got that signature, that'd be a huge problem. The reason being is because this, you know, uh, custody cases with like uh, infants and stuff is usually confidential. Okay. So could I get it? Yes. 
Would it be legal? No, because when it's confidential um, and it's usually like sealed, you have to be either a party of the case, either have to be Tammy or uh, Jason Meekins or a lawyer of the case. And they are very strict, like, hey, we'll give you this information. You will get a pen. But if it turns out you are not option one or option two, you will get prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. But I can tell you that the court case exists. I did see it, but I don't have any records to it. I, I didn't take a look. I just saw it was up there and I saw a do not pass go and I stopped. But uh, Meekins is going to talk, talk to us about that, uh, that signature. He's supposed to be up in 15 minutes. So hopefully we'll get through this. Jason uh, is very neglectful. Like, look at this. You got the signature. Now you're saying he's neglectful when it comes to Drayden's care. The few times he has come to see Drayden, Drayden was injured under Jason's watch. One time while Jason was visiting Drayden in my home, I went to the restroom. Then I heard a Drayden scream. He fell and hit his face and got a black eye. I have a picture of that. Now look, this is, look, kids fall. My daughter is clumsy as all get out. She will literally be walking I call her name. She turned around, look, smack dab into a wall and cry. And you'd be like, what the hell happened? I'm like, I called her name. She looked back. She ran into a wall. She got a little speed bump on her head. Kids are clumsy. Now, the black eye, you, you, you probably fell on the nose. You fall on the nose, you, you'll get two black eyes. But uh, he fell and hit his face and got a black eye. I have a picture of that. Look, when, when, you, when someone is trying to get custody... Anything that they could use against you, they will. The other time I had to help my husband in the next room for five minutes and I heard Drayden scream. He was hurt. Jason was not paying attention and Drayden fell and hit his head and got a, the wind knocked out of him. He had a huge knot on his head. That's my daughter. My daughter, she, oh man, she is clumsy. I swear, she was running one day and she just fell on her face, face down because she was running too fast and her legs got too far up in front of her. Scrape their whole, right the whole middle of her head, just to the white meat. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, da -da -da. Since May 2008, uh, Jason has not seen Drayden or called or text or came to visit. I am very concerned for Drayden's safety and well-being. And if he's placed in Jason's care, Drayden does not know Jason Meekins or any of the Meekins. Jason has failed to provide for Drayden uh, financial support. Hey, he's not giving me money. Um, he is unstable. Drayden has not been uh, away from me since his mother's passing. That does mean that means nothing. He is such a happy, loving, intelligent, funny, sweet, outgoing little soul. He is loved so much in our family. He has my daughter Jenna and aunt. He loves my mother, his nini. That's like a term for a great grandmother. Adores my dad and stepmother, Shayla's bio father, and his daughter, whom he sees every other week. So they one big happy family without Jason Meekins. We have him at this. I blocked it out because it's her church. I don't want y'all showing up at her church. I take good care of him. He's in current. He's current on his shots. There's nothing I wouldn't do for his baby. He is our world. There is her signature. This is November 3rd. And we are through that document. Oh, my goodness. How hard was that, y'all? Sorry. It, it, it was hard. It was hard for me. It was hard for me. And what, what typically happens, let me, let me get out of here. What typically happens is when you lose a loved one um, in the way that they did, like what we do for our cousin, uh, we really don't celebrate the day she passed because she uh, transitioned on Easter. But what we do is we celebrate her birthday. Every year, her birthday, we, we get together and we do something that she loves. She liked the bow, so we bow. But burying a child, you should never do. And the crazy thing about public records, I hate to just switch like that, is um, it's so personal, right? You put all this personal information out there. And this is why I redact things. You can get someone's IP address. You can get their personal email address. This was signed November uh, 6, November 2nd, 2022 at 6.04 p.m. So JDF is still there, by the way. Still there. 
Let me go through these comments. Did I miss anything? Let me, uh, this link is for invite, copy, Jason Meekins only, okay? If you're not Jason Meekins, please don't hit the link. If you're not Jason Meekins, don't hit the link. It's pinned at the top. What do y'all think? What do y'all think about this? Should Jason Meekins get custody? One for yes, two for no, based on this affidavit. Let me know. Let me email him also. One for custody, two for no custody. Two for no custody. As in, Meekin should get no custody. Um, don't you hate Meekins? All right. All right, what do y'all think? One for custody, two for custody. All right, I sent him the link via email. If he's listening, as soon as he pops in, he has the floor. Uh, Isaiah Welch says his life is too unstable for the kid. Okay. So that means he's believing everything Tammy said, which is fine. He's supposed to come up. I sent him the link. Uh, let me send him a message on Insta to let him know. He's ready. He said, hey, Henry, I'm ready to speak my truth and come on live. I sent him the link. Um, all right. And I pre prepared some questions for him, by the way. All right. Uh, Michael Fury said, I'll text him the link. Hey, if you, if you know Meekins, send him a link. We're going to keep going until he comes up. Let me close out my email. All he has to do is click the link. He clicks the link. He'll come up. So what happens next? All right. Uh, where are we at? All right. So she, we know she requested the TRO. Um, what happens with the TRO? Of course, in a couple of days, it just gets served. Um, all right. What does my guy say who was trolling me earlier? <laughs> One slash two fifty fifty custody. Okay. He out of timeout. Now he doing good. All right. Uh, the next document I have to show you is this. Let me make sure I got it right. Here we go. This is going to be a little explosive in my mind because it involves JDF. Um, we got a donation. This is a clever expose Tammy Frank. Thank you, clever fish for the $2 donation in the respectful uh, way. So I'm taking clever fish does not believe Tammy and that that's everyone's prerogative. But what happened to JDF prior to, um, transitioning? Uh, da, da, da. give me one second, y'all. All right, so we're going we're gonna to show you the TRO. The TRO was granted, so they saw the petition, and they said, hey, we're going to grant you the TRO. She filed it on the 3rd. Oh, sorry, I can't even see. She filed it on the 3rd, and the TRO was granted. This is typical. TRO granted. And what does it say? Come to court December 6th, 9 a.m. to discuss uh, basically child support and if you should have custody. It was basically everything I, I put. I sent him the link. Uh, he has not clicked it. I could drop it again. Because I, I want to get this interview. I want to I hear what he has to say. But this is what happens three days before JDF uh, transitions. So let me share this tab. Let me make it bigger. All right. So what happens, since you got this, this court case in two places, you got it in two courts, the courts are inefficient. They don't, they don't communicate. 
So while even though it's going on in uh, their district, JDF's district, the other district in um, Jason Meekin's district, the case is still going on. It says, hey, on December 1st, 2022, at 9 a.m., you need to bring the kid to court. Bring, bring Jason Meekins his, his kid. All right? And y'all probably like wondering, like, what? What's going on? We just saw, you know, what Tammy said. Why would the court say bring him to court? You know, bring the kid. A sheriff is going to serve him. And this is, this is telling. Let me back out so y'all can see it. All right. Meekins versus Jason Frank, habeas corpus. Um, on the 16th of November, the, the, the sheriff gets the document, right? He gets the document that says, hey, serve, serve Jason Frank, right? What date is this? Jason Frank, three days before, before he transitioned, at 1.53 p.m. at his home, at his home, which we know we had the TRO, but the TRO didn't say they could, they said they both could use the home, basically. But were they reconciling? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, the sheriff made two attempts, and it happened at 1.53, where, hey, the sheriff was successful. And serving JDF. Meekins ain't hit the link. Where, where is he at? He said he's ready. Let me see if he messaged me. Um, he says he has loads to tell. I may have to call him. Um, he keep. Sorry, guys. He says he has loads to tell. Hey, man, I'm clicking the link and it just says connecting. I hope it's loading because I have loads to tell. The reason why I wanted him on because he, he lived with the Franks for two weeks or a week or some, some extended period of time. So he can basically give insight to what was going on in the household after Shayla passed. And I may have to call him. Let me do a, let me do a test real quick to see if. Uh... And you come in with one. All right, point there we go. It works, so I can I can call him if if it doesn't work. He's mm, I'll drop the link again. Invite, copy, control V. That link is for. Sorry. All right. I dropped it again. Hopefully we get him up here because he has lows to tell. But what I want to show you guys is three days before JDF transitioned, he was served at his home at 1.53 p.m. All right. So think about that. Someone said, let Sky comment too. Why? She, she's not a part of this case at all. Like this, this does not pertain to Sky at all. I don't know what value she would add to this conversation. I just don't. So uh, next time we'll do a Sky. Like this guy, let Sky comment. So for what? Does she know something? She could hit the link, but I guess, but she won't. She won't hit the link. She'll just do stuff like that. It's starting to irritate me. But anyway, let's keep going. So we know JDF transitioned on the 19th while they were supposedly reuniting and, um, or let me, um, what did you say? Reconciling, per se. Reconciling on the 19th. Where is Meekins? Let me, let me, I can call him. I got my phone connected. What's your number? This is why we wanted to do the connection. This is, see, so look. I do a connection test. If you want to come on the show and you want to say your piece and you want to give some critical information, one, you're not just going to come up. Two, whatever information you say you have, I have to be able to verify first independently. I'm not just going to say, oh, you got some information. All right, you got to tell me the information. And then I need to be able to verify it, okay? And you can't say, well, such and such told me to tell you this because I, if such and such told you to tell me this, 
you're still not coming up because I need such and such up. I don't need secondhand information. And what happens is if I take that, if, if person A tells person B to tell me something and I say, okay, person B, I'll run with what you're saying. And then maybe person A don't like the outcome of, you know, what happened. They say, oh, I never told person B that. And they're like, Henry, what happened? I'm like, well, person B told me person A said it was cool. And, and no. So anyway, where is Meekins? Um, I can call you. All right. Where are we at? He I'm 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 literally on Instagram with him, messaging him. Can someone hit the link? Since some random person hit the link, just, just to make sure it works. I just want to see it works. Anyone can hit the link right now. You're not going to come up, but I just want to test the link to make sure it works. All right. So JDF transitions on the 19th. All right. What happens two days later? First, let me get the let me get the Eric right for being a great sport for sh I accidentally timed him out and he sent a donation. Thank you for all you do, Henry. Tammy, if you're not hiding anything, speak up. Just saying. Thanks for the memories, Jason David Frank. Now, I appreciate the donation and I appreciate him respectfully showing, you know, maybe he not all the way clear. John Alexander, thank you for joining the stream and showing me that the link does work. But Eric, thank you for your donation. I appreciate that. And that that's his statement. You know, I could I could defend both sides, right? I could whatever, whatever you whatever you want to call it. Sometimes you have to you you bear the cross. Sometimes that's your cross to bear. Do you want to come forward and maybe say some and tarnish the legacy, perhaps, of you know everyone's hero? Or do you want to stay quiet and hold it in? I mean, like this year is off to a hell of a start, and I've been seeing everything that's going on legally. And she's working a lot. She's working overtime. So uh, the link works. Let me see where Meekins is at. I can call you. What, what's your phone number? I see everyone hitting the link. If you're not Jason Meekins, don't hit it. Um, anyway, let's keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. And, and Meekins hopefully going to come up. All right. So what happens on two days after this is heartbreaking and i'm skeptical of some things she says but this right here this is bad this is bad so where are we at let me show you guys let me show you guys what happened so after jdf transition she gets served at her home so you know put yourselves in her shoes Let's just say everything she said was true. No discrepancies. This is her being served to bring the child to court on December 1st, two days after JDF transition. And when the cops serve you, they just hang out at your house. Hey, we're here. We're not leaving till you come out or you come home. So at 1.27 p.m., hey, you need to bring Jaden to court. Like, God, bruh, bruh, like, believe it or not, 1121, so a year and one month after she lost her daughter, she loses her husband. We all have questions about if he's her soulmate or not, me rightfully so, but still, you're served at home right after, where is Jason Meekins? I don't know what's going on. Y'all, y'all tested the link. Y'all showed it that it worked. I asked him for his phone number. Uh, he didn't respond. If y'all know Jason Meekins, please tell him to come up. Tell him to send me a number. I'll call him. We can get him on right away. Right away. Right away. All right. Let's keep going because we have to get to the JDF thing. Uh, where is this at? Um, now, this is, this is where it gets bad. In the midst of, for Jason Meekins, right? Not that he's not coming up, just the fact that um, you have this lawsuit going on where you're suing to get your kid, where you're not suing, you're saying, hey, produce my kid. 
And they say, hey, no, you shouldn't have your kid. So let's remember the dates are important. Dates are important. Dates are important. So after Tammy gets served, Meekins gets served. Now, I'm sure Meekins know about uh, the demise of JDF. I'm sure he does. And I would love to ask him, look at this, man. Look, I, I tell you, I'll stop writing this crap. Uh, hi, user from this channel. He gone. King Walter, see ya. I just wish people would be respectful of all parts. Even, even if I transition and my widow becomes a millionaire, be respectful. Just a little bit, though. Um, anyway, um, where are we at? Citation. Uh, this is Meekins. This is, what, this is what it looks like when you get sued, right? You, don't, you never want to see this shit. You never want to get this. It says, hey, attaches the original petition for suit affecting the parent-child relationship. That's what we showed you on, uh, August, what was it, November 3rd that she filed with. And you get everything. You don't just get that. You get the affidavit. You get the TRO. This is, it. This is the one saying, hey, give me your kid. Your kid is going to be with me. JDF supporter. I need Jason Meekins. And he not messaging me. He didn't win ghost. I don't know what happened. I got all the messages here. Um, I'm looking at my phone. Maybe he'll, he's active now. Hey, man, what's up? Let's see if I could FaceTime him. I can't show you the FaceTime. But the audio will come through. Y'all hear it. Y'all hear me FaceTiming him. No answer. All right. I tried to FaceTime him. I've emailed him. He's having some issues. Y'all test the link. It's fine. So what happens on the 22nd? Meekins gets, gets served the lawsuit, and he also gets served the TRO. And it says, uh, I think this is the December 6th date. Yeah, December 6th right here. Oh, y'all can't see it. But basically, he has to come to court on December 6th. And basically with his financial information in the battle for his son. This is her response on the 30th. This is her response on the 30th. We got more stuff from Tammy on the 30th. Because remember, this lawsuit is taking place in two places simultaneously because the courts are inefficient. So on October 30th, or November 30th, three days or 11 days after he transitioned, she got to, hey, I got to go fight for my grandchild. I have to fight for him. All right. Uh, she's the respondent. Um, basically, it's kind of a little bit more of the same. Basically, hey, I'm not holding a child against, against you, which we, <laughs> we know she was holding the child. Uh, he does not have the right to possess the child by virtue of any court, which is true because he didn't have parental rights. The boy by consent relinquished possession and control of the child to the respondent for at least six months before the date of filing. See, I love that. Number three. Hey, I, I had your kid for six months. Where was the urgency? I had him for six months. Where was the urgency? That's a fact. See, I love facts. I love facts. I love facts. Her, her, shout out to her lawyer for pointing out that fact. Um, a suit affecting the parent-child relationship is pending. Yes. Um, child should be kept in the custody of her. Um, there is a serious immediate question concerning the welfare of the child. It was necessary to cure the service of this licensed attorney. Hey, pay my court, pay my court fees. Um, deny, look, deny the writ of habeas corpus. Um, and this is 11 days after her husband transitioned. And we just going to fast forward to what happened at court. All right. Who should get custody? One for Meekins, two for Tammy. Who should get custody of Drayden? Actually, I'll do a poll. I will do a poll and I'll explain the outcome. And I'll share, I'll sh like for fathers who's looking for, for some advice on custody, I got you. Because I got 50-50, it wasn't easy. Let me try to do a poll. I've never done one before, so uh, 
Give me a second. Uh, I'm going to have to look up how to do a poll. All right, one for Meekins, two for uh, Tammy. I can't do the poll. That's how you know, like, I'm so new at streaming. I never thought I'd be doing this. I literally just like making videos on demand to help fathers going through a divorce like myself. So one for uh, Meekins, two for Tammy. One for Meekins, two for Tammy. Um, and then we'll go through what happened. Let's see if Meekins reaches out to me. Nothing. He's active now. I called him. It's ringing. Y'all hear it. He's active on Instagram. All right. He's not answering. I don't know what happened. I have no idea. All right. All right, let's go through the temporary orders, okay? So on December 6th, the court heard the petitioner's motion for temporary order. Petitioner is grandma. Shout out to grandma. And I got a grandma story, how she saved me from foster care. Um, Uh-oh, y'all not seeing this. There we go. So uh, here we go. It's big. This is, even though it says the 15th, they had court on the 6th. Now, remember, JDF had, he was supposed to be at court on the 1st, uh, in the 5th or something for the temporary orders for the divorce, which was not called off legally, by the way. I don't shy away from that. I'm just trying to be objectionable. Um, objective. All right, on October 6th, court heard the petitioner's motion for temporary orders. Petitioner Tammy Frank and her counsel of record appeared in person and announced ready. Responded Jason Matthew Meekins. He appeared with his counsel and ready. The court, after examining the record of the argument of the parties, find that all necessary prerequisites of the law have been legally satisfied and the court has jurisdiction of this case. So now the court is qualifying that they can speak on this. Give me a lot of game. The child, uh, Drayden Matthew Meekins, you see the birthday, May 20th. Uh-oh. Jason, that's you? Hello? Hello? He called me back. Are you going to talk? Hello? Hello? He's not saying anything. Hello? Hello? Um, sorry. Yeah, I thought he was going, I thought he was going to, um, I thought he was going to talk. I thought he was going to talk. I don't, let's call started. Like people, look, if you're not, call, sorry guys, call me back. He called me. Like, he's, he's seen it. He's literally seen it. What does it say? Call me back. Or send me your phone number. This is why you do the connection test, right? You do the connection test so you don't have these issues live. This is why I say, hey, connection test takes two minutes. Two minutes. And now we've been fumbling for five minutes, taken away from the show. He's not calling. He's not picking up. I have it. I have it dialed into the to Rodecaster. Hello. He hello. He joined. He ain't saying nothing. Let me let me try FaceTime. Like, come on, y'all. It's it's twenty twenty two. Everybody should know how to how to uh, how to how to use this. I'm not getting through to him. 
I'm not getting through. I'm not trying to not. I'm trying to bring them up. But anyway, we'll just we'll just keep going, man. We'll keep going. I, send me your phone number. Send me your phone number. I won't put it out there. Other people have done it. Send me your phone number. All right. So it is ordered that respondent Jason Meekins, Jason Matthew Meekins. Let me make it bigger for y'all so y'all can see. Uh oh, too big. Um, is appointed temporary sole managing conservator of the child, Drayden Matthew Meekins. So despite all those allegations, he still has temporary sole custody. And look, my mother lost custody of me, and I'm going to tell you the story, and I'll, I'll show you how it works, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll explain how it works after this, but let's get through it. It is ordered that respondent Jason Matthew Meekins as the parent temporary sole managing conservator shall have all the following excuses, rights, and duties of the child. Um, designate primary residence, the right to consent to medical, dental, and surgical treatment, right to consent to psychiatric and psychological treatment of the child. This is basically just being a father, okay? The right to represent the child in a legal action and make other decisions of substantial legal significance. The right to consent to marriage. I mean, the, you know, Drayden ain't getting married no time soon. The right to make decisions concerning the child's education. Um, except as provided, does that means nothing. Basically, everything to manage his estate, to manage uh, the estates of the kid. Like, basically, hey, you are the temporary dad, okay? It is ordered that the grandmother shall have no rights to the child, Drayden Matthew Meekins, at this time. Why would the court rule this way? Why would they do it? I'm going to explain to you why, because I know exactly how this works. It is ordered that the respondent, Jason Matthew Meekins, as temporary and sole conservator, um, sole conservator, shall have the following rights. Basically, to be a dad. It is ordered that Tammy have no rights to Drayden Matthew Meekins, okay? This was signed right before Christmas. So on December 6th, he got his key it back. All right. This is the guy who, who uh, was with Shayla. Now, let me share how he got custody and why he got custody. And he's not calling me. He's not responding. Don't know what to do. Tried to get him on. He won't send me his phone number. He won't hit the link. Let me drop the link. I'm dropping the link. In the chat for Meekins, after I give my spiel, I'll start letting some people up and come say their piece. All right. Um, custody. So growing up, my mother lost custody. Why? Because she uh, struggled with substance abuse. Okay. So she's struggling with substance abuse. She eventually lost custody, but it's not, it's not quick as you think, right? Because Children Protective Services, even though they knew my life was bad, they can't step in because you have to, as long as parents do these two things, feed the kid and not hit the kid. Children Protective Services will do nothing. You could say emotional abuse. You could say neglect. Neglect is very hard to prove. Emotional abuse is very hard to prove without a psychologist and therapist. So how did she eventually lose, lose custody of me? At, was I 17? I want to say I was either 16 or 17. At 16, and late 16, 17, she lost custody because she went to jail. So even though for my whole childhood, from maybe five since my father left to 16, she had custody of me. And what happened is, why does she keep custody? You know, because I wanted to live with other family members and it's a waiting game. You literally, my other family members had to wait until she slipped up to secure custody of me. And that's like, if everything Tammy says is true, it sucks, but she'll have to wait until Meekins proves to be who she said, who she thinks he is. Now for Meekins, why did he get custody? Because he should. It's his child. It's his biological child. And although those orders say it's temporary, there will soon be permanent as long as nothing happens, as long as, you know, Meekins stays out of jail, as long as Meekins stays sober, as long as Meekins keeps continually taking the kid to um, the doctor, okay? But if he missed one appointment 
and you know the other side finds out they may start they have to tally it they say oh well he missed this appointment he missed this shot and then that's how guys lose custody but Meekin should totally get custody and I'm a little bummed out because he was supposed to come up and share his experience about um living with the Franks he was supposed to share which allegations were true and which were not he said they were all not true but I can't get him to come up um, because of connection issues or what have you. But here he goes. You can go to his profile. This is the profile I was messaging. You know, you know, send him some support. Uh, he did lose his wife. He it says widowed father. Um, and I was hoping to, to have an interview. I literally had so many questions lined up for him, and how this added to the pressure of JDF because not only did he lose his daughter. He also was losing his wife. And when you lose a wife, that's like a death. Remember, I told you, divorce is like death. You have to go through the five stages. And although they may have been reconciling, you still go through that moment where you're like, oh, I lost my wife. Oh, I just lost my daughter. Oh, I may not have the best relationship with my other kids. My career may not be going where it needs to be. And there's another lawsuit in which I have that I didn't prepare today that was still ongoing, that's still open to this day. And then you have, you know, what's left, what's left um, for him, right? You know, hey, I lost my daughter. I lost my, I'm about to lose custody of my grandson. I'm losing my wife. And she said she wanted custody. He didn't say he wanted custody. There was no, um, there was no, I would say like proof that he wanted custody. Not saying that he didn't, but there was no court documents to support that he may have wanted custody. And sometimes it happens. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't get around to it. So it's like, I'm just trying to paint y'all the picture of everything that JDF was going through because it wasn't just the divorce per se. Okay. And we just here to talk about Jason Meekins and Drayden. Let me, let me drop the link. I see some people in the chat. Um, one of my mods text me, what's going on with Jason? I don't know. I don't think he's showing. He's online right now, but he's not responding to messages. Um, and it's not going as planned. I'm, uh, if anyone want to come up and share their two cents, there's the link to it. And like I said, um, uh, my mother lost custody because of drug abuse and eventually she went to jail. And that's why, uh, she was able to lose custody and she was actually able to get custody back of my sister. Why? Because my sister wanted to live with her because it was no rules. There's no rule. So imagine this, right? Imagine me growing up. I'll go full screen. I'll, 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 I'll talk a little bit. Imagine me growing up from five to 17. My mother's gone because she's, you know, she's, uh, as they would say back in the day, beaming up to Scotty. And I love you. Uh, yeah, I love my mom. I do, despite her shortcomings, and she's a fighter. She beat the Grim Reaper three times. Like, they literally had to clear and bring her back to life, and I joke about it. And she was over here not too long ago, and she's a different person. She's not that same person she was growing up because she didn't die and came back three times. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, that alone would... Who was this? Hello. Are you going to talk? Let me try something. Let me disconnect the Bluetooth. Hello? Hello? Look, man, people are playing. All right, so we got DEFCON 58. I'm going to bring you up. Wave your hands if you can hear me. All right, cool. But my mom, I don't hate her, but growing up, I was pretty pissed because she was getting child support. But what was I doing? I, I wasn't benefiting from it. She was beaming up to Scotty. So let's hear what DEFCON 58 has to say about this pressure cooker that was going on with uh, JDF. Hey, what's going on, man? Um, I'm talking to Jason Meekins right now. He's trying his hardest. He told me to send you his phone number, so I'm about to email that over to you. Did you, you get just, it from him? Um, no. If you can oh. send it to me via uh, um, Instagram, is are you... Um, I've got your Gmail. Do you want me to Instagram yeah. it instead? Uh, you can send it to my Gmail. Send it to my Gmail. All right. Okay. So got Meekins. 
And just so you know, a little bit of history real quick. This right here, this is Bentley Benjamin Frank. Jason oh. uh, gave me this dog. This is Jason's dog. Jason David uh, Frank? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is Jason David Frank's dog. This is Bentley. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I just uh, wanted you to know I've been friends with the family for a long time. Uh, I know Jason very, very well. Very good dude. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to get him in here. He's trying, bro. So let me – uh and i'll send you his uh phone number he's trying as well so okay yeah he could just send it to send it to me via instagram or however y'all want to send it just send it and I'll, I'll give him a call all right okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna keep trying we're trying he's straight up like dude i'm trying to get on i'm like well come on bro just, he could send it to me via instant messenger i see him right now send me your okay phone. yeah let me see what in the world's going on with him. Sorry, guys. Bear with us. We were supposed to do a connection test to avoid all this earlier, but I couldn't get him. All right. Uh, thank you, Defcon. Yeah, no trouble, brother. All right. Peace. All right. So this is why you, you want to do um, connection test. All right. This is why you want to do connection tests, because if you do the connection test. You solve all these problems. So when it's time to come up. We 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 good. We we know the link work. So what's what's wrong with him hitting the link? I'm looking for a number. Anywho, so in custody it, it gets bad. And actually, I could show y'all something while we wait. Right while we wait, I got something. What if I? What if I told you it was a private investigator who helped the father get custody back, like someone just like me. Saying, hey, uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, I need you to help me find my kid. Uh, let's make it bigger. Let's go full screen. All right. We're going to do this. We're going to show you this fair use to uh, this channel. All right. Private eye because he's been working. That's right, David Carroll, and that father hired the private eye because he's been worried about his son's welfare ever since the mother moved here to Michigan with the child. She works here at this dialysis center, and the private eye knew the boy was also in the car when the mother walked into work without him. So you have a, a father who's trying to figure out where his son is. He hires a private detective to find the son, and he says, hey, well, we know where she worked. Let's see. Let's see what else. Let's see what else. Your son is left unattended in the vehicle. This is a matter where law enforcement would have to be involved. That's the voice of a private investigator working undercover for a man in Georgia who has been worried sick about the welfare of his three-year-old son who has special needs and has asthma. And what the private investigator witnessed was the mother leaving the toddler alone in her car around 4:20 early Monday morning so she could go to work. You see this? She goes to work, leaves the kid in the car, and boom. All right, we have his number. Um, give me one second. Let me, uh, hold on. I'm about to call Jason Meekins. All right, this is me calling him. Let me let me bring his profile back up just so y'all can have something to reference. Y'all hear it ringing, right? He's not answering. I'm sorry, but the person you called. Like, come on, man. Am I getting trolled right now? Am I really getting trolled right now? Like, what's going on? How he sent me his number, I call it, and he don't answer. This is very odd. Let me make sure it's the right number. This is the right number. I'll do it one more time, and then I'm going to just give up. Like... <laughs> Do y'all hear it ringing? Put a one if you hear it ringing. 
I'm sorry, but the person. All right, yo, some some off, man. He trolling me or something. Anyway, let's get let's get back to the story before we shut this thing down. If y'all want to come up, share y'all peace. Um, hit the link. All right, so where are we at? The mother is leaving their kid in the car alone, and the father gets a private investigator on the job, and boom. The private investigator says the little boy was alone for about 17 minutes before he realized he had no choice but to blow his cover and call 911. I saw that the child was still in the vehicle, and at that point I informed my client what was going on, and I told him that law enforcement has to be involved, that this goes beyond my investigation, and the child's safety is at risk right now, and we need to do something about it as soon as possible. Oh. See, this is this is the tough part when you like a private investigator, right? You see some breaking the law, you actually see a child's safety at risk. You got to say, all right, look, I got to break cover and I am going to um, basically do what's in the best interest of the child. Everyone's calling me. Hey, Reese, if you can call me here, I, I'm in your life. Dude, the technology works, okay? Technology works. Some, I think I may be being trolled. I think I am. So hit the link if y'all want it. Anyway. Park police responded and a security guard inside the dialysis center where the mother works told her that police were outside. Uh, the employee came out, uh, indicated that she had just started a job. She was late for work. Her boyfriend was supposed to pick up the child. She made a mistake by leaving the child. A mistake? Are you serious? A mistake? You don't accidentally leave the freaking kid in the car. That's not a mistake. That's a choice. That's a choice. That's a calculated choice. No one, oh, I mistakenly left my kid. I've never mistakenly left my daughter in the car. Never. Never. Like, come on, man. Shout out to, uh, uh, where, we, where we at? Where we at? Shout out to the Sanu Sanuraka. For the $5 sticker saying, hey, get on with it. Yeah, because I think I am being trolled. I think I am being trolled. I tried every attempt. I've tried Instagram. I've tried phone calling. I've tried FaceTiming. And nothing seems to get through. No connection test. So the allegations, I guess, they stand to be he, he can't dispute them or won't dispute them. I don't know what it is. Maybe he got cold feet. Shout out to you, uh, the Sanu Kuraka, for the $5 super sticker. I appreciate you supporting the content. This mother, back to her talking about it was a mistake. In the car, I thought it would only be a couple minutes. The little boy's parents are in a custody battle that stretches from Michigan to Georgia, where they all lived before the mother moved to Michigan. This is what I'm talking about, fathers. When you have a kid out of wedlock, like you have no rights. So she want to pack up and go from Michigan to Georgia and take your kid with you. Ain't shit you could do about it, man. We talked to the father by phone. He says he had to hire a private investigator because his child's mother cut off all communication months ago. And I bet you he was paying child support. I bet you he was. Paying child support, can't see my kid, and I have to pay for a private detective to find your ass for my kid just to get my kid back, only to, only to discover... You are neglecting my kid. You you can't make this stuff up, man. Right now, no one knows where my son is, his condition, his well-being. We don't know anything. She has isolated him completely. That dad just glad the private investigator was there because who knows how long his son would have been left alone. She just started the shift. Easily eight hours. Now, look, 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 look. I'll, I'll give y'all something about my mom, right? Bless my mom. She she's still funny. She coming over uh, Thursday to see uh, my daughter. She left me home alone. I think I was five and my daughter was or my my sister was three. What was the rules? What was the rules? What was the rules about when you home alone and you five and your sister three? What what rules was it for me? Don't answer the phone ever. Don't answer the door. OK, if someone knock on the door. We go to our room. We turn off the TV. All right. That's what we were supposed to do. This is kid. This is kids growing up in the 80s. My mom was actually working at this time and she would leave me alone. She would, we would make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches by like six. I could cook. Kid you not by six. I could cook some eggs. I could make some waffles, like everything. So it, it was crazy. But anyway, let's get back to this story. I see you, DEFCON. She acknowledged that she was wrong for doing what she did 
and our officers released the child to her and contacted uh, CPS. And we've been unable to reach that mother for comment. Police say the boy appeared to be in good health, but it's unclear oh, what if any charges the mother will face. The father of that child wants her prosecuted. Hell yeah, prosecute. Prosecutor to the fullest extent of the law. We're putting live in Oak Park, Kimberly Craig, 7 Action News. Uh Look, I want I want that father to get full custody. I want him to put her on child support. I want her on supervised visitations because she clearly cannot be um, responsible enough to be a mom. Yes, I was making grilled cheese. <laughs> my mom was a trip, man. She was she yeah she was an addict, but hey, and you know damn well she was whooping our ass. And uh, so when we the social workers would come up to us, right? Because this is how social workers do it. My mom wouldn't let him in the house because, hey, she, you don't, you technically don't have to, you, unless they got a warrant, you don't got to let him in the house at all. So they will not like, can you come in? No. Can we talk to the kids? No. See ya. So what they'll do, they'll pop up on me at school because she couldn't stop them from popping up at school. And, you know, shout out to, I ain't gonna say her name, but I did have some cool social workers. They knew I was lying. They knew I was getting my ass beat. They knew it was getting left alone, but being with her, was better than the alternative of foster care because me and my sister, we get split up. She, My sister probably watching right now silently. She didn't end up watching. Uh, we'll get split up. So we we were coached. Yeah, we good. Uh, yeah, no, my mom never hits me. Uh, yeah, we're getting fed. No, she never leaves us alone. That's what you tell social workers to make sure they stay. Now let's hear what DEF CON got to say about why Meekins can't answer his phone. He can't do FaceTime. He can't do uh call no Instagram. I called his phone twice, didn't get through. Let's hear what he got to say. All right, what's going on? All right, man. So he's saying that he keeps saying connection issues. He's saying that uh, unknown numbers are blocked. Can yes. you possibly send me via email your number for me to send over to him? Uh, he can easily answer unblocked number. He can answer. I'm just telling you what he's telling me here. I'll read it to you. Um. <laughs> Oh if shit! You, if you're able to do hit the link, how is he uh -huh. not able to hit the link? I don't know what's going on. I've been talking to this guy all day. Okay, all right, call him and up. Call him on speaker. Okay, hey, uh, Nicole. Let me let me get another phone. I'll call him from another phone. All right, let's do it. Give me like half a second. All right. Anyway, we'll remove him from. We'll wait till he come back. Because, hey, no, a April, April, not sad. Look, me growing up, I'm not asking for sympathy. It made me who I am today. Would I ever do that to my daughter? Hell no. <laughs> because that's the goal of parents, right? You want to make it to a point where, you know, you, you, you put on for your kids to where they don't have to experience some of the hardships that you experience. You know what I'm saying? And that's where it goes. Someone said, show me the Carfax. Oh, you can, you can look me up. You can look me up. And you can see my uh, my record. You'll see my mom's record. You will see uh, the whole the whole child. Remember uh, during the um, affidavit, uh, Meekin said he didn't want to call the cops because of CPS. That's real. So what happened when my mom first went to jail? Um, they found out we were living alone. They come. They say, "Hey, how long you guys been living alone?" This is when I'm like 16 and my sister like 15. We still going to school. We still going to school. We keeping everything up. We on section eight. Our, you know, the, you know, my grandma, she know like what's going on, but no one really wanted to take us in. I'm like, oh, we good. You know what I'm saying? We got a little house to ourselves, And that's just how it was, but it was fine. It, I, I don't, um, I don't hate my childhood or anything. I, I may have been not cool with my mom for a while, but we back good. She beat the Grim Reaper. She coming over Thursday. Uh, she funny. I got to get her interview for y'all. I do. So she can cooperate. She can be like, yes, I left it. She may not even admit it. Cause she'd be like, she tries to act like she wasn't beaming up to Scotty when we were younger. She was like, Oh, I just smoked a little, you know, what Snoop Dogg was doing. I'm like, eh, no. anyway, let's, let's bring this. Let's bring them back. Hey, what, what you got DEF CON? I'm trying brother. I'm trying. Hang on. Oh, you trying now. Now he trying. Come I'm on, about man. to be pissed, man. I've been sticking up for him all day. Yeah, you can block, you can unblock unknown numbers. I call it unblock. No one gets my personal phone number. That's why you do the connection test. And now he's not answering DEF CON phone. So now we got more excuses. He tried. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He's calling me back. He's calling me back. 
Hello. Hey, Jason. Hey, brother, can you hear me? Oh, now he can't hear you. <laughs> Come on. Hey, man. Jason, bro. Y'all got me. Y'all got me good. All right, man. I'm, I swear to God, I'm not trolling. All right, so they got me good. I got trolled pretty good. I was um, looking forward to a Jason Mika's interview. I had a whole slew of questions prepared. I'm not going to release them because maybe I may, I may get this interview one day. But I had some deep questions, okay? I had some deep questions. Anyone else other than DEF CON want to come up? I'll drop the link for you guys. Let some new people uh, share their share share what they think. Um, I'm really disappointed. I'm sorry, guys. I was hoping to get this out. The link is posted. If you want to come, anyone can come up except for DEF CON because he's trolling. Anyone can come up. You want to share your piece. All you got to do is cam up. Uh, be respectful of all parties involved. And we'll we'll talk it out. And if you got questions for me about being an investigator or anything, we could talk about that too. Uh, my childhood was like back in the day, this was normal. This was normal. We couldn't go outside. Hey, she she's gone. No answering her door, no answering her phone, no going outside. We just chilling, watching TV, watching Power Rangers while my mom at work or doing whatever she was doing. Me and my sister, shout out to my sister, my ride or die, holding me down through this crazy divorce. But anyone want to come up and hit the link and talk about Jeff, not Def Con, because he trolling. He said he got him. Y'all think he got him? One in the chat if you think he got him. Two if he trolling. Hold on, Def Con. Yeah. All right. Got All him. Right. Is this Jason Meekins? Yes, this is he. This is, oh man, this is this sound like a troll, but we. It's, it's not. It's not. Okay, so if this is the real Jason Meekins, how did you and Shayla meet? We met in rehab at Taylor Recovery Center. How would you describe the relationship you had with Shayla? Amazing. That was my wife. That was my everything. That was. <laughs> Go ahead. That was everything. I mean, she, me and her were best friends at Taylor. Okay. And how long were y'all together at Taylor? How long was y'all uh, time together there? Oh, Jason, come on. Oh. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> Hey, Justina. Hey, hang on one sec. I'm, I got him right back on. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I'm sorry. Why, why, why don't I hear him? Why, why am I getting trolled today, y'all? Why am I standing up to get trolled? All right, man. Anyone else want to come up, man? Because this is horrible. This, this, is, this is reprehensible. This is why it should just be. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. Here, 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 here. Is he back? What happened? I got him. Hold on. Something happened with my call. Hold on. I got him. Come on. If, if you uh, I know. I know. It's a shit you, show. I know. I like this, like the stream. I, I know. Should, I did so much work. I, I look. I when I tell y'all guys, I got this this whole line of questioning. Let's just remove them. It's all smoking me. Oh, is he back? Is he back? Is he back? I'm getting him. Come on, Jason. Fuck. Yeah. Pardon man. me. Pardon hey, me. Hey, just tell him to hit me up email. I'm I got him. Yeah, see, this this is what I'm talking about. Trolling. Trolling. Trolling at his finest. Hey, you got me. I was thirsty for a story. I thought he wanted to share his piece. I thought he wanted to clear his name. Um and bougie cat. I don't know. Bougie cat, be, bougie cat be wild. And I can't see bougie cat. You don't have a, a, a camera up and I know you be trolling sometime. Can you at least put a camera up? Like, let me see your face, bougie cat. You have to cam up. All right. Anyone else want to come up? Bougie cat don't want to cam up. Yeah. Cause bougie cat a troll. 
Bougie Cat is a troll. And I know he's a troll. I read all the comments, guys. So I know kind of who you guys are, who you are not, how you feel about this whole thing. Um, I did so much research getting this. I was really hoping that he could come up and clear his name and 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 make his peace. And I had a look, I had some questions for him that were not going to be some softball ass questions. Like, but I had to ease him into it. And then I guess it may have gotten too hot when I said, how was the relationship with the parents? Then all of a sudden connection issues. Like, like, come on, man. Come on, man. All right. Um, I'll drop the link one more time. If anyone want to hit it. Cool. Um, this was traumatic for me. Uh, no parent should have to uh, bury a kid. I buried my cousin. It was my, one of my favorite cousins. Um, she graduated early. And what happens is um, maybe she shouldn't have graduated early. Because she started hanging around with different people. You start hanging around with older people when you're 17. And they're doing different things. Tucker, can you hear me? Wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. All right. Um, I'm going to bring you up in a second. So um, my cousin, she got mixed up in the wrong crowd. She started doing the wrong things. And what she would do is ask me for money. And we all know where the money was going. So we would, wouldn't give it to her. But we loved her. And when she transitioned, it was hard on the whole family. She was 21. So, all right, Tucker. And we got Leonard. Tucker and Leonard. So, all right, Tucker, what you got for me, man? How you doing? Hey, how you doing, Henry? Finally, I'm one right. of your live streams. been watching your stuff since the beginning, but always watched it like a day or so after. So, Okay. All right. What do you, what do you want to say? So, I mean, when it comes to uh, the whole thing, you know, with JDF, you know, transitioning and whatnot, to you know to remain respectful i definitely think there is a little more than yeah. meets the eye with everything like all okay. stories all around aren't like there's six different stories going around and there's not much lining up i definitely think there was more than what w happened at that hotel you know okay. besides either more than just a fight and more than just going and getting snacks what that is you know some some of the opinions I will keep just to, you know keep to myself to remain respectful to all parties. I appreciate involved. that. I appreciate that. But definitely do think that there are some things that aren't being told by someone, whether it be you know the random people at the hotel or any other parties involved. But yeah, I, d I definitely think there's something else there that no one else is being told. All right. Well, I'll I'll try to uncover as much as I can. No, no, I mean, you're doing a good job. I mean, you're reporting everything that, you know, you're no one has this on YouTube. Not, so. No one has this on YouTube. And I just want to paint the whole cold picture because there's some things going on that I still ain't covered yet. Yeah. And sure. It's just, you know, I got, I got other things. But thank you for coming up, Tucker. All right, man, you have a good one. You too. All right, Leonard, you ready? Leonard, can you hear me? Hands up, hands up like you just don't care. All right, John, I see you too. John, I may, I'm, I may know John. All right, Leonard, what's going on, man? What you got for me? Oh, hey, um, I don't have too much. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I used to watch Power Rangers back when I was little. Um, Jason David Franco is my favorite ranger, the, the legendary Green Ranger. And um, it's a shame what happened to him and everything. Yeah, man, he's he human like all of us. And uh, sometimes our problems get the best of us. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you for coming up, Leonard. Yeah, no worries. All right. John, you ready? Was I talking to John yesterday on the Angry Man channel? John, you, you live, man. Unmute yourself. Oh, wait. Hold on one second. You ready? All right. Can you hear me? You ready? Yeah. yeah. All right. My bad. I had. I was up. Uh, yeah. But I'm good, man. We was just uh, on Angry Man for the night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You saw me on Angry Man talking about my divorce. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, man. I, uh, hey. to give you up on my boy, though, man. Stay right here. Yeah, I was telling my wife about that. And that's, I was like, oh, yeah. Holy, what this man right now. That's, that's oh, it's, crazy. It's but how do you feel about JDF though, man? Um, yeah, that situation is is kind of sad, man. But um, mm -hmm. I just kind of sat here this whole time hoping that uh, old boy Jason Meekums would get on and uh, 
or Jason Meekins, whatever his name is, to get on. Yeah, me too. Man, like I some it. people have anything better to do with their time than you know troll some people who are actually out here trying to build a I, style of platform and actually give a I voice would. to some people going through some real stuff. Yeah, he and, going uh, through a custody battle, and this was his opportunity to clear his name, right. and then he got all these connection issues. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, it, it sounds like trolling to me, but um, I also want to just give you an update on my boy because I know when you jumped on that show, I was telling you that one of my yeah. close friends was kind of going through some foolishness with his soon-to-be ex-wife, uh, and he just had his uh, court date today for the temporary restraining order that she got on him, and he got thrown out. <laughs> Yeah, do this to like start seeing his kids uh, again tomorrow. Um, he's gonna have them probably about a few times a week, Tuesday and Thursdays for sure, yep. and uh, and then every other weekend. To this week. That's he good, man. Money out of them, and, and apparently he only got to pay like six fifty a month right now for the next two months. Only six fifty a month. <laughs> only six fifty yeah. a month. But, but compared to what she was asking for, man, it ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Eric, so, I see you. You up next? All right, John. So, I'm share that Thank with you, man. Update, man. I appreciate you dropping by and dropping that knowledge. And hey, yep. good luck to your homie, man. Thank you. Yep. Have a good one, brother. You too. All right, Eric. Now, this is a contributor <laughs> to the show. Eric, how you doing, man? How's it going, Henry? Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you for joining. Thank you for contributing to the content. I really appreciate it. What's your thoughts on all this JDF stuff? Well, before before I get to that, I've always been wanted to ask you, you know, since obviously you're a JDF fan since you were a kid and so am I, was there a particular JDF moment where that made you look at it and say, you know what? Yeah, this is the guy. This is the reason why I'm watching the show. What, what was your moment? What was that? When he first came on the scene, it was a six episode series when he came mm -hmm. out and embodied the whole Power Rangers and you have to think about it. I, I talked about this in my uh, first video, but it was copyrighted. I always mm -hmm. root for the bad guy. I'm the guy who roots uh -huh, for the bad guy. Yeah. So when he came on, and my my favorite ranger was the Red Ranger, you know, as everyone mm -hmm. was, because he was the leader. Yep, same then, here. Exactly, right? So he came out yeah. of nowhere, bodied everybody, took Amy Joe, became the popular kid, and I moved <laughs> a lot, right? Because my mom was on substances, so I moved a lot. So I'm always the new kid in school. So mm -hmm. you know, when I see a new kid come to school and he doing all this, I'm like, you think I could be like, <laughs> I could be the green ranger? Yeah. I could be talk, could well, I learn? Everybody? Yeah, well, I swear I'm going to get to the point in just a second. But um, but yeah, that's what it was for me. I mean, yeah, I understand like Jason and uh, Zach, Trini, all those guys, they were all like, most of them were straight from high school into acting yeah. like right there out of nowhere, like no act, training in acting, like no experience in writing contracts, something like that. But yeah. now Jason... He was a he's been in martial arts since he was four. He's been doing karate events all over the place. Like even way after he joined Power Rangers, he became a martial arts Hall of Famer and everything. That this guy was bleeding martial arts. I mean, I think if I if I was an, uh, a producer trying to look for people for a show like that, these are those are the kind of people I would look through, not like high schoolers. So I, I never understood that. But um, okay, okay but but the, get back to the reason why I'm here. Yeah. All this all this stuff that's been going around like all this uh-oh uh-oh <laughs> all the other court documents will be a lot of lies and smoke screens in this more lies and smoke screen than it even should be but a perfect example sky has something to say so she's posting and posting and posting she's got nothing to hide now the sons on the other hand i don't know what's going on with them yes i understand that they're grieving i understand why how some people don't want to be in the limelight i understand that completely but i mean if in the position of Either Tammy or Jenna, yes, I understand. You lost someone very important in your life and you need time to grieve. I get that. But if a lot of people are saying one thing about you, how come you're not defending yourself? How come you're just hiding and lying? Why all the lies? If you're not hiding anything, what's the point of all the lies? I can't speak for her. Um, you know, at this point... I mean, I'm just saying, I mean... Okay, I, let, well, I mean let me play devil's advocate. At this point, if she came out and said, hey, this is not true, this is not true... And here's the receipt from me getting the concession stands. And here's the, the camera footage. Would people believe she had no part in his demise? Ask yourself that. Think about it critically. Mm. Nah, I mean, I, See? I understand how the, why the desert of it says suicide. I understand. Yeah. Get that. You have a very nice night. You go and you go out for snacks. All of a sudden he decides to go. I mean, there's got, there's, there's some inaccuracies that goes without saying. I'm just saying, like I said earlier in the post, 
if you got if you have nothing, if you have nothing to hide, just speak up. Yeah, just speak I mean, up. Peace. That's it. No one's stopping you. I mean, I, it's her choice. Maybe she will. Maybe she will. Um, take I'm your time to grief. I understand that. Everybody understands. People are lying about you. People are wrong about you. Just speak up. It's that simple. Well, maybe, maybe down the line she will, man. Thank you, Eric, for coming up and uh, sharing your piece. I got to get to some other content. And no problem at all. I appreciate you contributing to the content. Hey, anytime, up. man. Thanks for what you do. All right. All right. We have Jason. I think I, I spoke to Jason before. What's hey, man. Up, man? Thank you again for doing all the streams. Um, I just want to say I know you missed out on uh, another Jason here today. There's so many Jasons. Um, but I still think it was really insightful that at least JDF, you know, from the court documents, at least he got served in his home because the last few like times it's ever been heard of, it was like he was in hotels and yes. uh, I actually was going to share something real quick. This is a video. So it's a video oh, that what is the video of um, it's a JDF. It's something he sent me on November 12th. Can you email um, it to me? Yeah, I was going to, I was just going to show it to you on my phone. Um, is it, is it safe? Yeah. It's just him. I asked him, I told him I was getting into doing positive affirmations. All right, let's hear it. Some back. Let's hear it. Let's and, hear it. Uh, so here, I'm just going to play it for you real quick. I don't know if you can see this or not. It's probably kind of blurry, but hold on. We just want to hear it. I'm going to show right now in Indianapolis, and I'm about to go to bed, so I'm super tired, but I just wanted to not leave you hanging, man, and uh, tell you that you can get through anything, and uh, you are enough, Jason, every day and every way you are getting stronger. Jason, you are the magnet for health, wealth, and happiness. Jason, you can have the will. Jason, believe in yourself. Jason, you can do anything to set your mind to. All right? Jason, you have the focus. I promise you, you can do it. With a name like that, come on, man. Give me some time. Please. Oh, thanks, Jason, for that, man. I well, appreciate you, man. I, I just wanted to, like, share that with you guys. I know that... It's sad and everything, but he really stood for a lot of good things too. And I he hope did. that, I hope that, I mean, I appreciate you doing all this and I just hope that some of that stuff doesn't get lost along the way. So yeah, anyways, that's absolutely. all I got, man. All right. Thanks, Jason. Have a good one, man. All right. We got John Alexander. What does he say? It's blessing to your channel, bro. Creep grinding, hoping that 2023 Opens doors for you that no one can shut. I'm hoping, man. I really am. I really appreciate you donating to the channel. Uh, Law, you up next. Bougie Cat, man. Is that the real Bougie Cat? All right. I see you. Bougie Cat, you know you be trolling me. Hands hands up if you know. Oh, now he like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He be trolling me. We go. Hey, what happened to Law? Why Law Trump? All right. I'm going to take a risk, y'all. Thank you, John Alexander, for the 20 piece. I appreciate you donating to the content. But Bougie Cat, we're going to bring up Bougie Cat. This is one of my biggest trolls, okay? All right, Law came back. All right, Bougie Cat, you're going to have to wait just because you was trolling, but I'm going to bring you up. I'm going to bring you up, even though I know you be trolling me. All right, come on, Law, what you got for me, man? Oh, oh hey, there you go. Hey, what's up, Henry? How you doing, man? Good, man. How you been? Um, I'm just doing okay. I'm just still, you know, upset with, you know, the loss of Jason, of course, but um as y'all can see back there i have like a whole bunch of power ranger everything you know i don't know if you guys can see it that much but yeah yeah i just oh yeah it's just still hard you know thinking about jdf and just thinking about all the memories that i shared with him like um have you ever man just him? yeah yeah uh i actually have met him um let me uh i actually followed you on instagram um just okay. a minute ago uh here let me let me uh pull up uh, something from uh that day real quick um what did you take yeah. away from that with jdf oh wow wow yeah I, nice. i'm the one, i actually i actually uh made this for him too oh, wait, oh. i'm sorry oh, i see it legend of white dragon i got you i'm sorry if it's uh okay yeah i gotta go opposite but yeah, I mean, you said, what did I take away from meeting JDF? It's just um, um, pretty much just, you know, follow your dreams and everything like that. Because, you know, I was telling Jason that uh, I had actually auditioned for uh, Power Rangers Dino Fury. But I mean, of course, I didn't make it because I'm sitting in this live with you. But, <laughs> you know, Jason, he was just a very inspiring person, you know, um, 
we did uh, shortly talk about some of the things that I had going on in my life. And, you know, he real life, like sat down and was telling me so much stuff that, you know, I could do to um, overcome that and things like that, you know? So he just told me basically just follow my dreams. And if they have another Power Rangers audition, you know, go ahead and audition. Cause he was just telling me that, yeah. you know, he didn't um, get it the first audition. You know that, right? Yeah. He actually um, also he was supposed to possibly be on a uh, VR troopers. Like, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the VR troopers yeah. pilot yeah. that Jason David Frank did, <laughs> but it was amazing. You know, I would have loved to have seen him in both, but you know, yeah. Jason like told me pretty much that you know I was his family the day that I met him you know and you know what, that like he didn't say what he, that? he he referred to most of his fans as family you know mm-hmm. yeah but, hey law I appreciate you coming up and share your support I'm about to bring up my biggest troll and okay if, thank you for coming up you can come up anytime all right y'all should I bring up my biggest troll this dude is a troll he is super troll but I, everyone should get their right to speak. Blurry camera and all. All right. Yeah. What's going on, Bougie Cat? Hey, what's up, Henry? How you doing, man? What you got for me? You trolling me today? I, I never really trolled you. Um, I think in the beginning, when you were doing the whole Tammy, Tammy, Tammy thing, and then I was wondering, like, are you just going after her when you no. don't have all the facts? You know what no. I mean? I got no, I didn't know. I didn't know. So I kind of did a 180. So when you said I'm trolling oh, you, oh. when you said I'm trolling you, I was like, oh, I thought that kind of hit me because I've been defending you a few times, even though in the beginning. Oh, I in the beginning, against, you, was, yeah. you was against me. Okay, all right. But I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you, did, did you see some of the links I've been putting in? No, man, I uh, I blocked you. I'll be honest, you blocked. I'll unblock you though. I'll all unblock right. well, you. You can email me all the links. I don't know. Well, I, I I found I found the original divorce papers for Shauna Frank and JDF. Ooh, I didn't look those up. Yeah, they're they're not hard to find. I know they're not. I just didn't yeah. do it. But okay, e- well, email them to me. All right, but I'm just saying on it, it it shows that he was paying alimony and child support. I know that and child support all the way through 2011. You got to pay extra to see past 2011. But once you, you Holy, know, well, he had to pay till at least the kids were 18. And if they exactly. go to college, in some states, 21. Yeah, so you exactly. Have to, you have to wonder like what the mom was doing with it. I know my mom wasn't giving me none of that child support. But did I also wanted to ask you um, concerning Sky, uh, you might have blocked me before, but did you ever see her interviews on YouTube? She has two interviews. Yes, I've seen them where, all. You've seen them all where she goes in mm-hmm. on about her mom and how she was upbringing and, you know, I don't want to go into all details, but yep, you know I'm what good. happened with, with her mom. You know about that, right? I, I know everything about Sky. Okay. So, so you hear that Sky, I know everything about you. Okay. And so the other thing I wanted to ask is the, the you know, because you were saying that uh Hunter and Jacob are like ghosts on the internet. They're very hard to find information on. Very yeah, hard. Jacob recently created an Instagram. Uh, I don't know about the Instagram. I couldn't yeah. find an Instagram, but I found I found all three of their Facebooks. Not Sky. She has escaped. She's famous. But I mean, like uh, she- Hunter has two Facebook pages from like ten years ago, uh-huh. and, and Jason has one as well. And I could tell it was Jason's. I'm um, Jacobs. I mean, because uh, Hunter was responding to it. Okay. So yeah. So in those. In those old Facebook, they they, they they seem to go dead after 2013. Like they just went ghost after for some reason. I don't know yeah. why. But you know, back then he's he was talking about how they 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 were kicked out of the house, how they were um, you know, they had to, the mom had to get a new home in uh Palm Springs, California, from uh what's the other place he lived in? Uh, Glen, I forget the name of it. Um, but you know, and then also how they had a baby baby sister in 2011. Her name is Brooke. I know about that baby sister. Yeah, her name is Brooke. So she's yeah. probably about 11. She's about turning 12. So <clears throat> there's this whole thing about you know going in, and I don't know if you saw the recent video that Sky's friend posted on that was put on YouTube where she went in on um, Tammy, and she was talking about the mistress and all that. You know, the, I don't think that was cool for her to do in her spot. Because now that just puts everybody in a bad light. You know what I mean? It mean it makes it look like, okay, yeah. 
if, I agree with you. If 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 you knew that and you knew not to say it because it would hurt the relationship, but then you go out and say it after the fact, it doesn't make you look any better. You know what I mean? I agree with you, Bushy. And then with Sky, she said that Hunter, she just, I don't know if this video was from yesterday. She said Hunter didn't know JDF uh, self-deleted until like almost a month later. Yeah. And then she's kind of putting in the light that it's Tammy's fault for not telling Hunter. Well, but then I'm thinking logically. Nice about Tammy? What's that? Do you expect her to say anything nice about Tammy? No, I don't. But I'm I, I'm not looking at it from just that point of view. I'm looking at it like from a logical perspective because I'm trying to think like you do, like you know, objectively. Exactly. Um, why exactly. Why would Sky say that about Tammy not telling Hunter? But then why would Sky or Jacob not tell Hunter their father passed away as well? I mean, sh sh shouldn't they have known as well? If they what knew, if, why would they not tell? What if they're not Hunter? that close? Exactly. What so there's a whole lot of different, there's a whole lot of different, um, you know, puzzles to this whole thing. And I've been trying to figure it out. I've been trying to find stuff. You know, like I said, I found the Facebooks. I found the divorce papers. I even found a picture of Hunter. I think it's him at the World Poker Tour back in 2018. And he's got long hair, just like. Um, All right. I can, I can actually. Uh, yeah. I it's maybe a lot of it's a lot of stuff. We're, we're a little late, but I've seen Hunter. I've seen Hunter at the family home in Texas. Okay. And only one can find it. And you know okay. who I didn't see at the family home in Texas? I didn't see Jacob. I didn't see Sky. Exactly. No, no. There's, 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 there's a video. There's a video yeah. on JDF called The Dysfunctional Franks. Yes. And it, and it shows them playing. And he's playing yeah. with Jenny. He's <laughs> throwing her in a balcony with a blanket on. You know, that yeah. was Hunter. But I don't see Sky and I don't see Jacob. And who do you and think I, was recording I, that? Who do you think was recording that video? Tammy, maybe I don't know. More than likely, yeah, right. But then I've also had people come up to me in the in the chat saying, you know, Jacob was, uh, you know, he had a he had a resentment against us. Fuck, I got you. Yeah, all I, that kind of stuff. Thank you, Bougie Cat. So right. it's, 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 it's Budgie Cat, not Bougie Cat. All right, Budgie, Budgie Cat. is a Welsh band. If you don't know it, they're from right. they're like Led Zeppelin from the seventies. I'm unblocking you. Email me. We need to be in contact. Thank you for all doing right. your 180. Okay. All right. Take it easy, Thank you, man. You too. Shout out to Budgie Cat. All right. This dude, look, this dude I'm about to bring up, don't judge my sound because his sound is so much better. <laughs> All right. Shut up and let's talk. How's it going today, man? How are you, bro? Good. How are you, man? Good, man. You got me shy about my microphone, bro. I'm like, damn, I feel like I'm like too. <laughs> hey, man. It's so good. I need you. I need you to come over here and give me the setup. But what do you got to say about today's content? Me getting trolled. I got trolled so hard. I saw that earlier. It was kind of crazy though, but I'm, you know, but you handled it like a champ though. Well, I just, look, I just want this platform for men to speak their piece and both parties to speak their piece. I've never kind of said no one could come up. The no, channel no. is open for if, you know, the grandmother wants to come up, if Jenna wants to come up, I've offered this platform to Sky plenty of times, but she, she, she don't want this. So, cause and you got to answer questions. Yeah. You know? I completely understand. And, and, you know, as far as like the, the family, like the, you know the, the the sibling turmoil going on right now i feel like i hate it i hate, I hate it. it too it's, it's sad to see and to be honest like i just you know I, and everybody everybody in the world knows you know jdf himself would never have wanted that or anything like that. never i bet you he wanted the complete opposite i bet you he wanted his whole family to be like this yeah exactly he, 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 he would thought it brought them together right i suppose yeah that. you would think like sometimes deaf you bring people together but you know when it's hard. Uh, money's involved or perceived money. Maybe they think he got $30 million, you know, in a safe somewhere and maybe they not get none of it. No, man. You know, from, the, from the little bit that I knew of JDF, like, I met him twice and, you know, he was a hustler, man. He's a hustler. He was out there making you know it happen. He was out there making it happen. He like, had to make it happen. He was not just providing for those in his house. He was definitely mm -hmm. providing for people outside his house. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so true. He was a provider and he was he knew he was out there getting it, man. Like you could see the hunger in his face, you know, trying to like it was yes. a man feeding his family, feeding his entire family. Yeah. Um, and it's just unfortunate because now you know he's gone, and who's gonna who's gonna fill that who's gonna fill that that void? Yeah, man. I who's agree. How's the family holding up? You know what I'm saying? Like they got a lot of court stuff that's coming up this year that they just have to. Yet you just can't sit around, and then you got fans and you got me showing probably things that they probably don't want to be out there but you know in a way the whole conspiracy theory that he uh self-transitioned on shayla's birthday i dispelled that 
if you okay, still okay, believe, okay. if you still believe he transitioned on her birthday after yeah. seeing not only her husband but her mother saying, "Hey, she transitioned on this day," it had yeah, nothing yeah. to do with JDF. Was that on the stream tonight? Because I caught the stream late tonight, so I got to run back. That was on the stream early, early in the middle. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm running back later, but that I didn't even realize that whole thing was going on. But it's it's crazy that people even think that, or even you know, there's a lot to it, guys. There's a lot to it. You know, family has a lot. And and real quick, I will just say, you know, the, the whole mistress situation. I wish that didn't happen either, because that's that's kind of like a little tasteless. I mean, you know? Yeah. Uh, it is what it is whatever you know like everybody has the right to like say what they feel but at the same time like damn you know like that's like i don't think that that doesn't help nobody you know but anyway uh -huh. that's just a little thumbtack hey thanks for coming up law i'll get you next time man it's a little late for me everyone i appreciate y'all coming up um make sure you like the stream on the way out thank you guys for all the support um next stream will be wednesday at around 10 p.m but i'll have my daughter so if she wake up streams over and then we'll do Friday, maybe 8 or 10 p.m. I still haven't uh, noticed, but uh, the Wednesday stream will be, it's not the fraud per se, but I can see how people make and stretch it into fraud. Because, you know, my mom, you know, she used to do fraud, right? What'd she go to jail for? Fraud. <laughs> uh, if we found someone's credit card, she would use it. Not saying JDF did it, but that is a form of fraud. That's credit card fraud. And she did that a lot. We find she find a credit card at Blockbuster. We we out. We renting games, we renting movies, and we ain't taking nothing back. So out to my mom, man. But I'll leave y'all with this. I appreciate everyone for watching. Make sure y'all tune in for the next stream, and hopefully it, it's better. I won't be getting trolled. I'll see behind the scenes what happened and why I was trolled. And I will leave y'all with this. Listen, I apologize. I know you hear this a thousand times. You're my hero. If that person gets tired of hearing it, don't stand in his line. He shouldn't be your hero. I will never get tired of hearing that because it is an honor. Yep. Yep.